Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our private Black Star Repatriation and Pan African Community uh, meeting. And this is an organized meeting that we have every once in a while. And our goal is always to just share with everyone all of the updates. Uh, so I am functioning as the president and the CEO of the group. And I'll introduce all board members um, tonight that's available on the call. And they'll just introduce themselves and let you, they'll let you know what they're going to be working on and what's their commitment to our group. And the first of all, I'll just uh, start myself and then I'll go into some updates. As far as myself, uh, president of the group, my goal is, and what I'm talking about as far as the group, I'm talking about our community operation. Um, I am also administrator and other things as far as the deals that work with the land. But as far as our community function, uh, I, I am organizing and leading uh, the community. And my goal is to make sure that we have all of the things that we need to put in place. So. All of us bought land. I appreciate everybody, myself and everybody else that put their money together to purchase land. So that's one aspect of things. We paid for attorneys, surveyors. We paid money for the lands commission. We paid a whole lot of money to get things done. The land be being cleared twice, the land being set up and, and laid out to where you have the pillars. All of that are things that took a long time and took some serious work. And all of us who paid money for our land and paid the administrative costs, that's what covered all of those things. Now we're basically looking to go into more of a membership base now. So looking for everyone to pay their 150 for last year and then their 300 dollars for this year, whether it's 150, 150. So that give us additional cash flow to do basic things like security and lights. We also use some of that money to get a, a business house at the other uh, estates across from us called Jahadzi Estate. So that was a very good power move. And we organized ourselves and we put our first vice president there to run administration there, just like I run administration here in Georgia. And then he can be right there in the middle of the action when the chief, when the attorney, when anyone comes there with paperwork, if anyone wants to leave paperwork to get signed by the chief or do certain things, all of those things can be coordinated right there. If someone needs a one year lease or, or, or so, or a six month lease, uh, our brother Azibo uh, can get that for you. But it's something that you have to pay him as far as him doing those things to you. Uh, those are those things that we're setting up just like the residency and other things, which includes you having to pay money for it and things like that. So that's one of them. Having a Zebo set up your lease, you can, you know, we talked, me and him talked about it, about uh, $200 uh, for you to, for him to just do all the run around and get everything set up for you. So what, when you leave from wherever you are and you get to Ghana and you go to the land, everything will be set up to where you can just move your stuff into your home and then you have everything set up to now where you have close access to the community it's it's, it's like you can even see it right across from uh, this estate so it's it's going to be a very short ride and one the thing is it's going to be a situation where when you get certain vehicles we'll be able to drive up there you're going to be, you're going to be able to go and see the progress of your home and you're gonna be able to just get updates and be able to interact with your builders. And a good thing about us having some of these homes at Jahazi Estate, which provides homes that's already built already and you can either rent it or you can purchase it. Only thing that we know about is the rental. So $2,000 a year, $2,000 a year family, get you a three bedroom, two bathroom. Uh, so uh, a one bedroom or a two bedroom, it would be a little bit less. So that's in everybody's budget if you want to move there. So that's the best thing I can recommend. And it's spend one year and take your time and build your house as you want it to be built with perfection. So that's our super game plan. So as far as myself and Azibo, uh, president, vice president, our goal is to make sure that we have administration set up and get things done. And the more you can support that effort with uh, whether it's donations or whether it's membership dues, the more we can get things going. And then once we have security officers there, uh, we can just make sure that uh, they have basic things that they need because the security officers were never gonna say, stay on the property to do security. Uh, and it was always a problem. So the only way we could have accomplished this is to get the residential house. And it's not something that we're gonna, we, were, we were ever gonna debate with anybody about. Myself, Azibo, which are the main two people working and coordinating things. We discussed that, we shared it with a group. Um, about almost two months now, and we've been talking about it. So 
I want to let everybody know that all those things worked out perfect. We have videos of this beautiful, beautiful uh, house that we have where any of us can stay as a guest if we need to overnight or need some extra days in the area. That's what we have set up because there's an extra room and it's a guest room. So this is a smart calculated move that we make. We're doing things very tactical and organized and that's the way we want to do it. This year, we would have had to go into a mode of literally having to clean house. Now the clean house aspect comes from um, January uh, 7th in Ghana. In Ghana, when one of our members or ex-members, I should say, feel that it's okay to come after me for a non-refundable money. Everyone signs the agreement of what is refundable and what's non-refundable. That's the only thing we go by. We don't go by nothing else, whether it's phase one or phase two. And also phase two is something, it's 60 acres. It took me over a year to get all kinds of things done to get the final survey and the final land search. These things in Ghana take serious time. And I knew that. And that's why we wanted to start paying the chief September 2020, right after we finished paying for the first 15 acres, which we did in a record amount of time. We started the beginning of September, um, sorry, the beginning of 2020 and ended up paying for it by September and started paying on the next set of land, which is what we've been doing. We've been collecting money from that point to now. And we've been paying the chief, we've been paying people in the land uh, commission. We've been fighting to get a lot of things done and then the attorney has to get paid. So it's one of those things where, you know, we have a corporate attorney, Richard Lapo, and he's there to handle all of the registration, all of the legality. So everything is as legal to a T as you can get. Now we have another attorney, his name is Barrister Charles. He was more so the attorney that worked on all of our residency and he's there to help us have the legality in the country and eventually help us get uh, citizenship. Uh, we have a, a group of immigration officers that will be working on that and they're more, they more efficient. Uh, bro Brother Barrister Charles will now move into a frameway as a defense attorney. And if one of the main cases he's gonna be working is a case with our ex-member Velta Forbes, Mimi Forbes, uh, who literally feel that it's okay to call the police and drum up all kinds of false allegations against me, which is very serious. And it puts myself, my family, my business, and you guys in jeopardy. And it's sick and it's disgusting because that person is not thinking about nobody but themselves. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm not here to ruin anybody's situation over money. I have, I have a business here. It, ask me the list of people that, that owes money to this business for things that we do for people and things like that. You know, it's, 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 it's life. You, you, you deal with it, you know what I mean? We don't ever put our brother and sisterhood in front of money and in front of things like that. You've ruined someone. Marcus Garvey was the greatest Pan-Africanist that ever lived because he had a vision of Africans in the diaspora connecting to Africa, building industries, building nations for themselves. And for the first time since the Garvey sabotage and the downfall of the UNIA, someone like Bomani Time of Africa for the Africans organizing a organization that's with 50 of us strong as investors, but also great minds to lay out the future of a community for us, our family, but also have extensions for other people that are gonna be members and non-members so they can live in a nice, beautiful town and area. So those are the things that we literally have laid out and put together for everyone. And you know, since we have done all those things, we want people to appreciate it. We brought people to the country. We set everything up, organized everything. So most of the people that we deal with, we have organized everything for them from their entire tour to th their entire return back. When they get to the country, they're reaching out to my people and connecting my people. So this person literally feel like it's okay to, for me to do all that stuff for them. And then they get in that situation and they, and th you know, we can th always go to court. But the reality of it is you sign non-refunders and it doesn't matter who it is. Jesus could come back and you still ain't getting the money. Johnny Cochran could come from the grave and and you know and 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 get your case to you, and he'll still not beat me in court. It does not matter, people. So I'm not gonna give that person any power by giving them any money now. And anybody who have betrayed us, which we call treason, they lose their entire property because it goes now in the defense fund to pay for a defense attorney because we will be battling people in court and we're not gonna accept people destroying our business. So that's one of the main things that I want everyone to understand about the shift of certain things. We're paying two attorneys now and things like that. And this is more than just beyond my case. We have to have that attorney in case something happens to anyone. And in case 
we also need a, that attorney to also look over everything that the other attorney is doing and look into the practice of the chief to make sure he's on point and doing everything. So all of these things are really serious. The organization structure, what we have is very powerful and very and well organized. The surveyor that we have now is a survey that's done a well, good job on the uh, 15 acres. So now he's going to be working on the 60 acres for us. And he have sent me a nicer update of the, uh, the layout of the 15 acres. I asked him to put the business center all the way to the right to where it's um, one plus acre. And then the community center all the way to the left, which is one plus acre, the security office and entrance in the middle. And then we're going to literally go out and get, um, uh, get funding as far as uh, grant money and as far as uh, you know, small business loan and things like that to be able to literally pay for those foundations of those structures. And everybody else is paying for their house. So with that said, all of the structures will be completed. And then another thing I'm looking for funding for is to build a, a seven to eight foot wall around the entire property. This will seal us in a one way in, one way out and it will be literally a fortified command base. It will be more so what you call, uh, you know, a, literally a command center. And we'll be able to operate from the business center, all of our business, all of our opportunity as far as tours, investment, real estate development, property management, uh, uh, tech support, and things like that. It puts us in a unique situation in a secure facility with all the technology that we need. It will be a smart development. And I'm going to put all the bells and whistles in it based on using my financial resources that I've accumulated with our business, Africa for Africans, which is a corporate company and is valued at a lot of money. And I'm all able to do a lot of different deals and negotiate. And I've reorganized my business office. I have a beautiful video out showing people my entire business office is reorganized to the point where we're going to be having meetings here and also meetings in the back. I didn't show the back, but it's a big backyard. And we're literally going to talk with big companies, small companies, brothers in the different uh, organizing aspect of business. We're going to be getting involved with other people that even don't even look like us and be talking to certain business people. And be, you know, my whole thing is to uh, get in their head and their psychology about even the children and the poverty in Africa and having them, you know, use my nonprofit wing, which is another wing that we add in. And I have a, my, my good sister, Leah, she is, um, you know, she's not the secretary for Black Star, but you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's something that she's working with me on, uh, which is the nonprofit to be able to get us additional access for school supplies and things like that that we're doing in the country and uh, boost our network as far as the wonderful things that we do in Africa. And when I'm going to be setting up an Indiegogo uh, site and I'm going to be asking for $5 million and I'm going to be going out there and getting that money, all that money I'm talking about, it builds the infrastructure in the, you know, in our community, we didn't start with building infrastructure, but we're going to add it and make it all work because we can do that. And we're going to put the best technology in it. So uh, the money is available in America. And if you have business and you can get certain things, work with me, family, use the system to get what we need to get. They're never going to give you reparations. So the only way we get reparations is to have a clean, organized business like Africa for Africans that's literally been in business for 14 years and I've crossed all, of, you know, crossed all the things that you need to cross as an organized business. And I've never had any problem with any of these folks here in the county or the state of Georgia. I'm looked as, as a respectable business person with a business name of, this, of someone they, they hunted down almost 100 years ago, right in this very same state. Uh, and they have his record and everything here. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things. So like I said to people, um, we are the whirlwind, you know, Marcus Garvey, uh, you know, coming back energy type stuff. And we don't want nobody to destroy that. And nobody will ever destroy it. And I will never let anybody do anything to destroy us. Uh, unapologetic Negro PN or Velta Forbes, none of them. So right now there are videos out there. It may, I may not sound the most professional and I do apologize that, but also at the same time too, what I don't apologize for is standing my ground as a man and fighting and defending myself and doing what I need to do to tell my story and, and things like that. So some people like it, some people may not like it. Me personally, I don't care, it's nobody's business but for, for, for the fight that I have to put up. So that's one thing. So I have all of those things organized and ready to go because I'm a fighter. I've been fighting in this movement for a long time. I do have YouTube videos that, up, that I put up with my trip to Egypt in 2004. Uh, in April, that was my second trip to Africa. That was almost 18 years ago to show you how long I've been in the game. And I did another one 
uh, in 2006. It was more of a conference with big names like Dr. Jeffries, Dr. Smalls, and a few other pe people. And uh, I was the person that was doing the documentation, but also I was one of the organizers doing many things to them. I'm, at that point, I'm young, I'm not a speaker, so there's no need to give me no mic. I don't need to, you know, I'm working behind the scenes. And that's what I've been able to build a foundation from there on to this point and get the knowledge and energy, you know what I mean? And from even going far as from learning from my daddy to be a technician at a young age, to going to school, getting high scores, and then getting a technical school in New York to do the same thing. And also the same thing in the military exam to get in the Navy, to do aircraft maintenance and learn about logistics operation, you know, the whole world of uh, aircraft maintenance, aircraft readiness, and all the things that have prepared me to be well organized to run this operation. So unfortunately you have a bunch of, you have a few, you have people that have been in a group and thought that they were smarter than me or not to run this than me. You know, my thing is always family. If, every, and if anyone who thought that they can do this, they could have done this a long time ago. They could have, you know, they could have put this together. They don't have to come and deal with me. Put it together for your brothers and sisters. But the reality of it is most people don't have the heart. They don't have the guts. They don't have the staying power. You know what I mean? Things like that. People are saying that I'm finished. And I'm telling them, no, but money is not finished. But money is just getting started. So watch out. Stay focused. I'm bringing the real. And that's why I have a corporate and defense attorney. That's why we have our access to the Africa for the Africans accounts to where we can draw up different money from the nonprofit and the, the, the corporate side. So family, I'm telling you, we're gonna build this community. You're gonna love your investment. Everyone that have stayed, you're being rewarded as a member to where you literally, you're the foundation investor. Everything that we have on the property or we gain, gain um, profits from is a part of an investment account to where it benefits all of us and our future family. And it's just money that's for us. You know, it's basically our own credit union that can fund and finance our projects and bring us more value. So let me explain how this thing is gonna work as we talk about um, uh, defense and everything, because I don't wanna get into too much of the other story that I tell you about. The only thing everybody needs to know is that I got away from, um, from the police that tried to shake me down and I'm on the case and things like that. So uh, the, what's important, um, and it's also important in the reference to the person, because that person sp spent a lot of money in that phase two and it's there now. So all that person needed to really do is to sell that land or work out a deal with me, which I've offered and you're good. So anybody at this very moment who want a refund back, your refund is in the land. People who we have deals with that, uh, you know, that we were gonna sell their plant and give them a portion of the money and th those things, those things will still continue. I only have a few more people left to refund back and then we're good on the refund situation. Uh, it's just one of those things where it's fine because when they lose the money, the money goes back into the business. So we don't lose at all, they lose. Uh, so we're always encouraging people to cancel and get out the group and lose their money because it don't make no sense for them to continue on and be in a miserable situation. This is a real operation and it's for a tight niche family. So that's the 15 acres. Now, what we're going to open up on the, uh, the 60 acres, we're opening up to where it's not a situation where you have to be a member. You can just, someone from America want to come and get a house there. They come see property management uh, right there at the business center. And we just, you know, we just made them a deal and, and it's de theirs and things like that. <clears throat> the only people that's going to have access to the 15 acres is members. So some of the members who may live there in, um, on the, uh, the 60 acres, uh, you know, it's, it's absolutely fine. Or we live in one of the apartments. As long as they're a member, member meaning you fill the paperwork out and you're part of our unique group that will just, you know, assemble all the time and we make decisions on big projects and things like that. And we have these private calls. Uh, so that's different from the people who, when we open up and my, my brothers like Peter Henry literally use all of this land that he's going to acquire and build apartment complex, which me and I'm going to sit down work on certain things. So members in the group that have these and these visions, we're gonna organize it to where you put yourself in a situation now where we, you build what you need to build and you have people that's gonna come there and you know and rent it. It's not gonna be a stipulation of what the stipulations that we have to be a part of the foundation of Black Star Pan African community because they're not community members. They're just people who live in, in the open area of business, and residential that we're building because the land the land is always that we're you know we're selling reselling and at the same time to whatever we put stores and shops or whatever in that area we're making profits from it 
It's a very smart investment for all of us in the 15 acres. So I'm basically saying, everyone that stick with me in the 15 acres, I'm going to make you rich. I'm going to make you filthy rich and I'll make your family rich and I'll make you this be a game changer for us for the rest of life. So my responsibility and my job is to make sure that I get us in that right direction and I keep us there and I keep us focused and I keep us away from drama and I protect us to make sure that... But, and, but I'm also looking for everyone's support because the biggest issue I have with all the Velta situation, every time I would post something in a group, someone in the group or other people in the group would go back and share it with them. So there's a bunch of information that was sent from our group directly to, you know, to folks. So, you know, you all know that we have snitches in the group, but well, I want to say we have shaken all of them out. And some of them feel like they feel a certain way about certain things, but it's what it is. Once you get caught for treason, it's what it is. Once you get caught for doing certain things, it's what it is. The rules are right there. Uh, everybody sign off on them. And at the end of the day, uh, we can't let one or two community members destroy a whole bunch of us. Uh, so, you know, it's on and popping family. Uh, Bomani bringing it live, raw and uncut. And I'm telling people, anybody want to mess with us, bring it because I'm going to shut them down. I'm young. I'm strong. I'm in, I'm in the greatest strength and energy of my life. You know, I'm, you know this, at, the, at the point where... We, we have everything solid and organized. So right now, while I'm talking about solid and organized, I want to hear from the other board members. The other board members, starting with the first vice president, my brother, Baba Azibo. And I want us, once he's finished, I want us to confirm his position as first vice president by just giving him a black power fist or saying, uh, you know, congratulations, brother, uh, to the position. So brother Azibo, you can unmute yourself and let's get into... Uh, uh, let's get into the introduction of our board members. All right, so when we hear him, we'll, we'll, I'll mute myself. All right, let me see you. All right, the uh, next person. All right, so it is Azebo and then Peter Henry. So you guys, when you get a, a minute, just uh, unmute yourself. Right, and then uh, we have a new secretary and it is my good brother. It is my good brother, Charles Giscombe. So Charles, I'm actually unmute yourself. Hey, Bomani, this is Charles Macon. You talking about me? All right, Charles. Uh, no, it was actually Charles, my Charles Giscombe. So Okay, okay. I'm going to go back and, mute. Yeah, so I'm just letting them know whenever they get time while I'm talking, just uh, chime in. So any board members, just chime in and we will talk. But uh, for now, uh, what I want to do is uh, I'm always forgetting to talk directly with my sister, Maureen, so we can talk about the medical committee. Uh, Maureen, uh, can you unmute yourself? Hi, Bamani. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Yeah, right, can you hear me? Greetings, Maureen. I can hear you loud and clear. My Hello. sister, what I want to talk about uh, today is what you and I have always talked about, uh, good energy, good spirit, and, and good vibes, and having right. us being good elements, and, you know, and good food, good nutrition, is, all that stuff is very important. Uh, but uh, medical is one of the things that uh, our medical and wellness committee was a nice organized committee that we started with. And then once we started with that, uh, the committees, we kind of, things kind of, you know, got a little to where, you know, we didn't have enough members and we still don't have enough members, but with the 50 of us, we just need about five people in some of these committees. So I just want everyone to know, Marina is the organizer of the wellness committee, the medical and wellness committee. And uh, anyone that's have any interest, please reach out to her and it's something we're going to start off basic, but the goal is to build a program for medical and wellness in phase two, and it's an open situation for everyone in the town. As I mentioned, phase two is just open to where anyone can just come and get certain services and things, but it is a business, so we will be charging some people and some people not. Uh, it all depends on those things, but we're going to get the best of our medical professionals to come together and provide these basic programs and also expand onto it. Uh, so, uh, my sister, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to everybody. Tell everybody about your background, 
and why you're the one that's uh, have the background and energy to lead the wellness committee and so on. Okay, yeah, uh, my name is Maureen and I'm based in London, England. So um, my background is that I'm a complementary health therapist. So I do massage, aromatherapy, reflexology, etc. And um, one of the things that I'd like for people to contribute if they can is, is if you have any experience in um, conventional medicine or if you have any interest in developing um, any complementary health services for the community because um, I my, my vision is that the community centre or the business centre would be where there could be some health provision for the community so it could mean that people rent rooms out to provide services probably you know a bit of massage aromatherapy um, health any medical health services that are not immediately available within the vicinity of the of the land in order so that we can actually work to correspond with the hospitals find out what services are available locally but also like i said to provide some type of um, medical service on the on the property so that we can actually have something in case of emergencies so even if you haven't got that type of background directly just if you want to contribute to what you'd like to see there that would be helpful because i know um some people are going over there as retirees and they might need to know where where they can um get their supply of medication or they might want to try alternative treatments to help them with any ailments they have so it would be nice just if if, if even if you just want to contribute you don't have to be part of the group you can just contribute with your ideas and um just let me know so that we can have a a nice broad um, agenda on what we can provide for the area in terms of health and wellness. So um, you can get me on the group chat or you can um, um, contact me directly and just give me any ideas or if you'd like to be on the committee on the medical group, then it would be very much appreciated. Okay, Leah, yeah, you're interested. It doesn't matter if you haven't got any medical experience, you just let me know what you'd like to see on there. And then we can do the research to find out how those um, how those provisions can be made for the community. So like I said, it doesn't have to be anybody who's a doctor and nurse. I mean, if you are a doctor and nurse, that would help. But if you've got any type of medical experience, that's fine. If you haven't, then that's fine as well. Just let me know and we'll do the research for you. Oh, okay, doctor. Leonora is a, a certified health coach and a Reiki master. Oh, excellent. That's very interesting. Yeah, just get in touch and, you know, send me a direct message and we'll sort it from there, okay? And then we'll find out what we can do to help everyone. All right, so thank you for that. And it's um, 10 o'clock in England. Just thought I'd let you all know. <laughs> all right, well, perfect, uh, Maureen. Appreciate the energy. Uh, Anyone have any questions for Maureen? Can you just unmute yourself and go ahead with your question? All right, Hi, so, Maureen. Oh, this ahead. is Leah. Written can you, Leah. Is there anything online written about the group or we're still in development? Well, we used to, we, we, we started off very well. We had a group of about say five, six, seven people and there were some notes written up, but um, most of those people are not actually in the group anymore. Some of them are probably still around, but the, the group became, um, how can I put it? It wasn't, it didn't have any sort of major direction as to, there was different ideas coming in, but they weren't really recorded properly. So um, there isn't anything set up as such. I don't know if Bamani's got anything back in, because I had another phone and there was on my other yeah, phone. What I have is um, the, the group is still available. So what I'm doing is I'm going to post the group in the page. So anyone wants to join, they can just click and join. And anybody right. want to join other groups, you know, usually I'll just find it on WhatsApp. And um, so. Yeah. yeah, so there might be something in the group page, but I don't think there is, because whoever was managing it before, they've actually left so um we did have some ideas on on 
All right, okay. Before okay, no, there was- I apologize, I do have the notes. It's not much, but- um, oh. And it's a note from Ronitka. Um, <laughs> Ronita, so the best thing for us to do is start from fresh, um, uh, Maureen. Okay. We did look at um, the provision on of the health service in the vicinity. We did look at that. And we did look at, um, was going to have a look at what, is available for expats that go over there that probably want to transfer any insurance documents. We were looking at that as well. Um, we was looking at any complementary health provision that was available. But like I said, these things were like on the surface and they weren't fully researched, but we can do that from now and just research whatever it is people think we might need on the land. So like I said, for everyone else, if you, even if you haven't got any medical um, experience, just please let me know what you'd like to see and how you think that we should go forward with, you know, providing immediate health care for people around the area. Okay. All right. That's, uh, that sounds good. So, so family, uh, all you have to do is go to our group uh, page and click on the health and wellness and you're in that group. And then you can communicate with everybody else in the group. You'll see a list of other people. So that's what we have that one uh, set up for. And, and uh, also, um, you can, the people who are on that list can call each other and just organize it. It's just up to individuals to do it uh, at this moment. That's the best I can say um, because, uh, you know, we're, you know <laughs> people come and go and say big things. So make sure when you say certain things, make sure you're committed to it. And uh, me and my sister, Maureen, has been, you know, we've been rolling together for a long time. As everybody else in the group, because the only people that's left is the people we've been rolling together strong. And then we have new people, which... We're, you know, we feel like we're setting a great example for by being well organized. And, you know, unfortunately, you have to clean house and make sure that, you know, we have the right set of energy because it's very important. So we're going to hear from other board members. Uh, we have our brother, Prince Charles. Can you unmute yourself? Yes, my brother. Yes, greetings, I'm my unmuted. brother. Greetings. Uh, this I'm unmuted. Show. Yes, you're unmuted. No. You, sound, you sound good. I can hear you loud and clear. Yes. Uh, well, I'm actually the secretary of a Black Star Pan African, Africa for the Africans.org. My role is to support Bamani and the other board of directors in operations. That will be my role. So if anybody wants to reach out to me, they can in the chat or they can um, send me a, um, a message through WhatsApp. That's uh, my, name, my name is Charles Jiscom, and I'm located in Newark, New Jersey. Yes, perfect. Uh, they're still trying to get you to, to tell a little bit more about yourself, you know, your background and things like that, and um, you know your whereabouts and how you got around and how you got here and things like that. Now, something short and, and smooth. Oh, oh okay. Well, well basically, really, um, parents uh, originate from Jamaica. And um, I spent some time in Europe working in transportation. And um, I relocated back to the States around about it was, you know, September 2015. So I've been here and uh, my intention is to uh, move back to Africa when it's feasible. So that's a little bit of a history about myself. So actually I went to Ghana in 2020 December tour and uh, I've been communicating back and forth with Bamani, and um, that's how I ended up uh, falling in love with Ghana. I um, came on the tour, and basically I decided to stay back for, for four months. So after that period, I decided that, you know, Ghana is where I need to be, and the sooner I get there, the better. Avalon is falling. <laughs> Yes, brother. Appreciate uh, appreciate that. Uh, anybody have any questions for our brother Charles Giscom, a board member, and uh, the positions that uh, all of us have? You know, it's it's still an organized board where we just discuss many things, so it doesn't really matter of each person's position. But you know, uh, so my brother is going to operate uh, more than just the secretary. He's going to be we're going to be working on some things, making decisions, and making sure things are organized. All right, so, and remember family, anybody have any questions, just unmute yourself and then just talk, um, you know, but um, 
you know, so it's not a situation we, where we're waiting to the end to have certain conversations. All right, uh, my brother Kofi, Kofi Jonathan, let me just unmute you and see if you can introduce yourself, say a few words that uh, you're a board member and a part of our group that's going to be making a lot of decisions and working on a lot of things together. Okay, greetings, family. Uh, it's your brother, uh, Kofi Jonathan Hill. Uh, I'm originally from Jonesboro, Georgia, just like Bomani. Uh, I, I made Tallahassee, Florida my home after going to school there at FAMU. And uh, since then, I've uh, worked in numerous jobs, including urban planning. And uh, now I'm working in the wind turbine industry. Um, currently, right now, as we speak in the state of Montana, uh, freezing my, my behind off, uh, building wind turbines. Uh, I've uh, first went on Bomani's tour in November of 2018, but had, you know, been talking to him probably about a year and a half before that, maybe two years, and uh, Pan African, Black nationalist. Uh, believe wholeheartedly in nation building and uh, talk with Bomani and he brought me down to believe in that needs to start with community building first. So I wholeheartedly believe uh, in this project. Uh, it's my dream, my goal, my vision, and this is exactly where I want to be at. Uh, and, you know, I recently went on the tour and of, of this past December and spent a month there in Ghana and just got more acquainted with things. That's all. I appreciate you, brother man. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. And if anybody have any questions for our brother, go ahead and reach out. <laughs> so one thing I want to clear up to everybody, um, the conversation is about uh, you know, people, about how do we maintain people. The, the issue is we don't need to worry about maintaining people. We have a situation where we built a group together, and that group we understood there was be about estimated about fifty percent casualties, and right now that's kind of what we are rolling with. So yes, we are saying that uh, we have over fifty members, and we have lost over fifty members which is fine because this is something as a serious decision and beyond us being a serious decision, it's a decision that you have to give it to your lifetime. So people saw me uh, in, um, in the summer of 2019 when Garvey Town failed and you know, people asking you what you're gonna do and you tell them that, you know, we're a naval tactician. Uh, we always have, you know, we always have a plan and that's it. So the plan was to get our own organized deal and that organized deal was myself working with our consultant, our attorney and the chief to literally put together something structured and strong. And so it was a program from the ground up. And it's something where you're doing a lot of conference calling, going through everything, but people tend to, they tend to you know, have their own level of imagination and they want things to be what it's not set up to be. Uh, so the community we're building is what we're building. And it's uh, all residential, except for the business center and the community center. And all of us will be able to have access to our medical, our classrooms, our training, everything in those buildings. It is like, you know, not as like, you know, it's, it's like our version of our, you know, the Pentagon, our command center. So, you know, we realistically don't need everybody. So the goal was to make sure that we lose enough people. And I work very hard on doing that. Pissing people off, irritating people, you know what I'm saying? Showing people what's going on, posting, things like that. It's things basically that people shouldn't get frustrated with. But you ask that people, they're gonna get frustrated with these things when you're putting everything together for them. You got to have the builders organized. You know, spend a lot of money to organize those things. Uh, you, you organize uh, people to work on the land to help you and do certain things. You know, these are things that, you know, you're putting the work and time into, and we just want people to understand that it, even when that is very rough to move to Ghana, very rough to do what you're doing, and very rough to see the vision of this. But I've always had it laid out, and I'm telling people always, follow my lead. I've been working on this for a long time. 
I mean, this is this is the this is the happiest year of my life because I've been able to literally get past all of the, the craziness, you know, including my great escape from Ghana from the punk weak toy police in Issa Gone. You know what I'm saying? We are we're destined for greatness. And even the new administration that we have, we've been put together. It's a winning team. And then all the game plan that we have to build, we need to build. So the people who left the group, they had other ideas because once they came into the group, they realized that you know, everything is not going to be their way. And that's what it is. You're dealing with a military mind, a militant and a military minded person. That's about organization and tactics and leadership. It's in my blood. You know what I'm saying? And it would never, you know, and it's what it is. So when people can't deal with me, I always tell them, leave. Hey, you sign something to say you get a refund back. We work it out and get your money back. Leave, move on with your life. You know, and things like that. That's the way investment goes. And I play that part. So I got a lot of people interested in what we do. And then they couldn't hack it. So they quit. That's like the quitters that a lot of us are. We're never sticking around to stick around to build something where it lasts on. That's why we look around in our community. We look around in our environment. What do we own as a people? You know what I mean? My family came in the 80s. And I, and I had to realize that, okay, hey, all we own is like what I have. I have my car out there and I have this house right here. And I have whatever is in this house. You know, and these are all depreciated assets or things like that. It's, you know, it's not want to be ungrateful because it's better than what a lot of people have. But at the same time, too, you know, it's like if we keep on operating like that for generations, we will literally just have waste our life and waste generations. So what we're trying to do here is I get the money from people in America. You know what I mean? Whether they saw the land or didn't see the land, that's not my business. If you're going to send it, you're going to send it. And the deal is the deal. You know what I mean? And, and things that, and I put the program together. A conference call every month. That's one thing you could always say about me. Conference call on a regular basis. We have updates on a regular basis and things like that. And we go through things and we talk about us organizing ourselves like an organized unit. We use tactics as putting the chief and other people name on the incorporation. My name is, you know, and things like that. That upset people. We, we do certain things to where, you know, where, you know, it, it, some people that's upset just because you know, and what I have an issue with is honestly, we've had an issue with just a lot of older women that's stuck in their ways and want things their way and thinking that I'm their punk ass son and they can push me around and things like that and it doesn't don't work like that. You know, and I just like, I have people going around saying that I'm disrespecting old ladies and things. People can say what they want to say. I'm not here to do my business and things like that. And I'm not going to let nobody disrespect me and things like that. So these are the things that um, we're saying to everybody, you know, respect the program and we built this program to make sure that the people who are not about business are going to eventually quit because I'm a strong man. I'm about my business and I don't, you know, I'm a roughneck. You know what I mean? I'm not, I don't know, soft little, cute little uh, bacon cookies and pies and having, you know, picnics and stuff like that. I'm a revolutionary. I'm a warrior. I'm a street guy. You know what I'm saying? When I was in the Navy, we used to, you know what I mean? We used to go out there like rough sailors, dirty mouth, foul mouth that's out there, roughneck. And you know, you're getting into fights and you know, people thinking you soft because you're in the Navy and we're just beating people ass. You know what I mean? You know, I'm you know, I'm, I'm I'm that type of person. So you know, so you're telling people if you know they're not ready to deal with a real man or a, a strong man, then they need to go somewhere. And we're not gonna let uh, a group of old women feel like they can run us. It's not gonna happen. You know what I mean? So we try to incorporate as much of everyone into leadership and opportunities, but we saw a pattern where we have these old mammies. Like, I'm going to call the names. It's what it is. And people may not like it. It's what it is. We're going to, you know, Barbara Sutton, you know, Kim Curry Goldsby, Catherine Arnold, Velta Forbes, Shelly Matthews, all wicked, evil, mammy, black devils. You know, I appreciate their donations and the money that we actually made from some of them. But for the most part, their pain in the ass can just go hit the highway. Uh, literally, you know. So we're telling Kim when we see her, that uh, you're fine to build your house and live there if you want. And you're also fine to sell your house. Uh, but uh, you're not someone that we look at as a member. So the best thing to do is to sell your house because we don't want no uncomfortability situation here. Because the rest of us are our family. We're going to be able to just go to each other's home and be able to do wonderful things. My family alone have eight plots and things like that. So it's going to be beautiful. It's my Jamaican family. And my people got, you know, my people got class and culture, you know, and things like that. And we're not going to have them around a bunch of this angry, miserable uh, women and things like that. So most of them are gone. 
and things like that. And some people just had better decisions to make for their family because other people in the group irritate them and piss them off. So what I'm talking about is why people are leaving and things like that and why people are getting irritated. So I'm asking everybody to respect the next person and things like that and so on. And if we have to just get rid of one person to save our group, we will. We've been doing it all along. That's why we got rid of the uh, second vice president, Chaz. As a matter of fact, he's so stupid. He literally came on the call and think I'm going to let him listen to the call. I see on there, Chaz White. I just removed it right before we got into it. These are the situations that I'm talking about. It's like you want to be a part of a group, but then you don't want to be honorable to the group. Chaz sold Intel to Delta Forbes so she can, so, and that's how she was able to get me. Lucky because one of my brothers uh, tipped me off, and a few of our brothers are always sending me messages like, hey, they're talking about you. They always have a, uh, the disgruntled folks coming together with each other. And the, the, the biggest thing that you want to talk about is, oh, Bomani's a dictator. Hey, I'm a dictator. I'm a military militant person. You know what I mean? No, my tactics come from, from, from naval warfare and all come from the G code, the gangster code, the mafia gangster code. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a rough situation. I can't, I can't be like the people who came before me. I, you know, I, I, I have to be, everything with me is set up as defense. You know what I mean? As defense operation. Garvey was trying to progress, but he didn't have the, the, the set of attorneys that we have didn't have a legal program, didn't have any of those things in place. So when people came and attack, and then, you know, and then, you know, people like myself, we got goons out there, like Negro Pian, literally, um, I got a video coming out for him, you know, where, you know, we, where we're putting that warning out there to all my homies out there, the roughnecks on the streets. If they ever see him, they just go in there to clean clock him and work him over a few times, work him to where they bust his jaw up and bust his face up to where, you know, where when he tried to do one of them live stream, his face is hurting and he can't talk because he's a pussy hole and he run his mouth too much. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to shut people like that down. No one comes against the revolution. And anybody who's telling me, oh, Bomani, calm down. Bomani, be easy. Oh, don't take, you ain't what the person that been to what I've been to. You ain't the person that name has been tossed all over the place to the point where some people, I don't answer their calls. I just block them because I'm not gonna have people, you know, either people trust me or don't. I've been in this game for a long time. And like I mentioned, that's why I just put those YouTube videos up there that I've never put out there before, you know, my, you know, and things that I, to show people the history of where I came from and what I'm about. Uh, so I'm a, I'm, I'm a fighter and a warrior and, you know, you, you know, you know, one day when they came at me in Ghana, you know, it's kind of like a wounded soldier escaping, you know what I mean? It's kind of like one of those James Bond movies when, when they tear James Bond up and he's just, He's falling off a cliff somewhere. Next, you know, six months later, he come back stronger than ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's Bomani time, but here yeah, I'm a fighter. So I tell people, uh, those who like the fighter and want to see somebody that's going to work together to build something for them and protect them against the stupid, foolish, dumbass black people who always feel like they can destroy everything, highlight me because I'm the one of them people that ain't going to put up with people bullshit. And that's why these are some of the reasons why people leave. You know what I mean? Things like that. Because people think it's going to be a situation where they can sit there and debate and go back and forth with me and be on some punk weak shit. We don't do all that stuff. We, this is a militant operation. So my board members, whenever anything needs to be discussed and connected, my board members are going to be uh, dealing with those things uh, outside of the members that are specifically no personal, like which is all of the ones that's been added to the group lately to replace the, the people that we had to just get rid of. Um, so they don't need the board to... To, you know, to check them out, but others that come in, if I meet someone, they fill out the application and everything looks good. And they're just like some of the general people that we have had where we don't really know and then they come in and they waste our time and leave. You know, so the board will check them out. I still don't mind people joining in and quitting because as long as they quit cancellation money, I've, I've made a lot of money in this business from cancellation. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm not here to, you know, just cry, cry, you know, cry me a river. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, I'm sitting here working regardless. And whatever money you pay, I, it's no turning it all back over to you. When I'm do, doing work, I'm here 24 seven. I don't have no days off and I'm on call seven days a week, even when I'm on holiday and getting away, you know? And, you know, usually it's like, put, you know, leave the phone, why, you know, why, why come and chill and relax? Yeah, no, that's fine, I'm gonna get there, but I gotta finish this little job right here for one or two hours. So even in that situation, I can't I have no peace. I'm just literally, I have two businesses that takes up my whole life. And that's Africa for Africans, Tours Investment, and Black Star Pan African Community. So anybody who do any of them business and they quit, they better read the refund policy because that's what's going to be in effect. 
and things like that. So when they lose out on a refund, we it we I, I just reinvest that money back into the business, and that's how I go to business also. And anything that we need financially, we always have money to take care of it. That's what I love about the, the way we set business up. So none of my business are failed, even in the worst times. And they just grow. And then the foundation of all of this business is Bomani Technology and Business Enterprise. It's just business administration and technical administration. And then whatever operation, whether it's Africa for Africans or whether it's Black Star or whether it's an independent project or consultation, you know, it gets done here. And this on all these things will be done at the business center. I'll be able to just walk there to the business center. And the best thing about it is I'm going to have new, fresh recruits. Young minds are going to be able to, you know, come to the office and get training. And, you know, instead of them being a teenager, learning all that foolishness in school, they're learning how to run a technical and a business empire and things like that. Uh, they're learning how to fly planes uh, via simulators. They're learning how to troubleshoot technical systems. You know, I, um, I know my nonprofit wing, you know, Delta Airlines is here. Plenty of things we can get from them that's old and used, that's our good equipment and things like that. They're a training facility, a technical facility, you know? Um, so we, I got I got great ideas and things like that to make it work. So I'm not gonna sit around and fight and debate and argue with people. I'm gonna get the job done. So that's what we're doing. Anybody ever need to connect with me or work with me, I think they can holler at me. I'm the nicest person that you ever meet. People think I am a monster and yeah, I, am a, I can be a mean, rough person when it comes to business and things because I'm not going to be on a punk stuff because we tend to not take business serious. All right, somebody just unmute himself. Is somebody have something to say? All right, let me unmute you back. Um, and all right, brother Baba Zebo, let me see if you can unmute yourself as I begin to just make sure all board member introduce himself. Greetings, Baba. How are you? Fine. How are you? Greetings. That's my brother, man. Uh, brother, man, you 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 have came through this year strong, man. I respect what you have done, and I and I appreciate you accepting the position as first, first vice president. And just want you to introduce people your, yourself, where you came from, how you and I connect, and uh, what you're looking to do as first vice president, and what you're currently doing down there now as you begin to get the, the Black Star Pan African House slash office uh, set up. Now uh, let me just uh, mute myself and you just uh, talk. And we just open uh, up if anybody have any questions after you uh, talk. Yeah, um, <clears throat> my name is Baba Asibo Ajani, and uh, I came to uh, uh, the continent uh, 2020. Um, I stayed a year in uh, in uh, Accra, and I, I moved to uh, Winneba, and. Uh, from Winneba, I moved to uh, Chauncey, and uh, I've been uh, uh, involved with uh, the, uh, the the Black Star Pan African uh, community, um, and I, I got got involved with the liberation struggle uh, back during a, a, a time of the uh, uh, trial of the Black Madonna. Um, you know, um, and I, I've been committed, dedicated to, to the struggle. Uh, I've dedicated my life, all my life. You know, I, I never, I never liked, liked, uh, working for on the, I call it the slave plantation. You know, I always have had, had a spirit, a revolutionary spirit. And, um, I've always been a, a very spiritual, highly spiritual individual. And, uh, my whole, my whole uh, uh, demeanor and my whole uh, uh, understanding of uh, uh, us as a people in the universe is uh, it, it all comes together. The universe is on our side. And uh, well, eventually we are going to win this war regardless of, of all of the opposition that we have met. You know, we we are going to win this war, and all 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 of all of the Uncle Toms and all of the 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 ass kissers and cutthroats, they 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 gonna they gonna feel feel our wrath because we we gonna have that power. We we we're gonna build power for black people. Uh, I'm I'm honored to become uh, first vice president of. Uh, 
Pan-African, uh, Black Star Pan-African community in uh, the uh, Jahazi office, Black Star Jahazi office. I see, I see a bright future here, um, but I, I want to build build this this office up and make it a, a premier spot for uh, a building uh, commerce and uh, uh, for the people that either come here long term or or uh, come here for temporary residence. Um, we we need a place to where we we won't have to go through a lot of changes to get to our, our projects that we're building uh, in the development the Black Star development area community. We need a place to where we could just go right across the street because the roads are going to be built, the uh, lighting is going to be set up uh, in uh, Black Star uh, is going to grow as a community. And as a uh, as an industrial uh, uh, and and and, uh, and uh, agricultural uh, area, we we're going to change the whole this whole area. And then there are other plans for for this area that's not that's not even concerning Black Star, but but what we're going to do is we we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, integrate a lot of this stuff. We're gonna integrate ourselves with the community. Uh, my immediate plans uh, is to create Black Star t-shirts with the logo on it. And uh, I have a member that, that, wants to, uh, that wants to join Black Star. She just made herself, uh, she just uh, put herself forward and said, hey, can, can uh, her name is uh, Sister of Four. She 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 wanted to join. She wants to join Black Star, and want be want to uh, be able to teach language, and start a a uh, a youth movement in Jahazi, on behalf of the, the Black Star uh, Pan African community. She wants to learn as much as she can about uh, Pan Africanism, Marcus Garvey, and she wants to teach that. In fact, she is she is an elementary school teacher, grade school teacher, and uh, she wants to become a part of Black Star. Um, hey, I, I'm I'm here for life. Uh, I, I've dedicated my life to uh, to uh, Black Star in in the liberation struggle of Black people, and uh, as 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 I shine and I have a lot of uh, a lot of aspirations in the in the near future, and as as I shine, Black Star will shine. So that's that's all I got to say, bro. All right, I appreciate you, brother Azibo. I want to also uh, ask you to shine a little light on how you can help members who want to move to Jahazi Estate. That way they can have a home already set up and they can just use that one year lease as a way that they can just uh, get their building and other things set up for them on their land. Okay. Uh, the, these uh, these, these uh, uh, dwellings here, uh, I don't know, they, they feel like apartments, but they're houses, individual houses. All, all the electricity is underground. Um, I, I have, a, we have a contract, a Black Star has a contract with the, uh, the manager. Uh, the, the, these are facilities that are still under development, but uh, they have uh, one bedrooms, uh, uh, which is 500 a month, two bedrooms, 700 a month, and three bedrooms, which is a uh, thousand a month. Uh, you can either buy or, or lease them uh, for a year or two years. Um, we have a contract for a year, but we, we uh, our goal is to, to get three, get two more of uh, three bedrooms. And they have other uh, four family flats that are underway uh, farther up from, from this development, but it's right in back of this development. 
and, and, and they're being constructed as as uh, I speak. But uh, uh, a lot of uh, when when Bomani brought the uh, the bus, the tour bus here, uh, people were were actually interested in in uh, purchasing uh, of the properties here. <clears throat> And 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 to buy a property uh, uh, with Blackstar, uh, I haven't found out uh, what they purchased for. Uh, I've only found out the uh, rental side of it. Um, the man, the manager is is very busy, and uh, you know he, he's just uh, his name is Fifi, and. Uh, Okay, we call him Fee for short. And he, he's just uh when you whenever you can catch him, you know, I have his number. Uh whenever you can catch him, you uh you can catch him. But uh I have his phone number. If anybody's interested, just uh th throw me a notification saying, hey, uh, put me in touch with Fee Fee. And uh, you know, that's that's about it right there, you know. And, uh that's as far as far as I'm going right now, but uh, we 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 got it. We we got to get furniture and stuff up in here. That's my immediate goal: is to get office, uh, workstations, uh, lounging areas, uh, twin beds, and things of that sort up in here. Uh, TVs or whatever, you know. And uh, when we get the other two uh, uh, units, we're gonna do the same thing with that. You're gonna get get uh, uh, furniture and workstations and things of that sort up in up in here, and uh, we're just gonna keep it moving, brother, brothers and sisters. We're just gonna keep it moving, you know. And I, I'm the type of person that don't like to waste a lot a lot of time. I don't like lagging, you know. And so that you know that's 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 just my character, you know. Uh, I, I'm a I'm a graphic designer by trade. I know you've seen the, the photographs and stuff of me uh, doing doing the uh, the company logo on on the wall. I want to do T-shirts uh, and I, I want to pass them out uh, throughout Jahazi and I, and then try to try to build this uh, integration with uh, Black Star in in the larger community. There's a lot, we have a lot of aspirations. We have a lot of things, goals that, that we want to do with the community. And one of them is, is to start an all female soccer uh, uh, football team. Uh, it, it would be the first of its kind in this area. And we want to set up an all guys football team uh, for a black star. But uh, that's, that's in, that's in the medium future, but, uh, we got to start working with the community. You know, people are still scratching their head, trying to figure out what the hell are we doing? What are we trying to do here? And um, and, and they they thinking in, in tree in the fancy, but we're thinking in English. But uh, we we got. I want to start a group to where they'll be able to teach Fante, uh to to the new members. We have a make maybe a. A four or five week course for of Fonte, at least learn the basics in tree, and then uh, and then we we have a, another four or five weeks of teaching English to the uh, you know basic English to to the people that don't speak English. You know, this is part of the uh, the uh, integration program that that I want to get established. You know. And we are going to make money, but the money is going to be made by. I, I want to. I want to sell food. I, I want to sell my my daddy's barbecue recipe. And I, I'm going to call it exactly that. My daddy's barbecue, and uh, and uh, I, I want to do that. I want to. I want to sell barbecue and maybe have a mixture of American barbecue and uh, Ghanaian uh, dishes and stuff like that. And that's, you know, sell them for, for, you know, 10 Ghana each and sell, sell about, sell hundreds of plates, you know. But uh, that's, that's, that's all of my aspirations farther down the road. 
but I'm I'm here to stay. This is my life, and I'm I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna I'm gonna own this. I'm gonna own it, literally. So, uh, Black Power and uh, Black Star, uh, Pan African Village, or community. It's not a village. It's, it's basically it's, it's an empire. This is what we're moving towards, and that's it. That's it, Azibo. <clears throat> Appreciate you, brother. We are building an empire. Uh, so let me um, so let me just mute you. The background is loud. All right. So let me see who else we have. Our brother Kamal. Let me see if I can mute you. All right, Kamal, if you can mute yourself, uh, go ahead. And... Uh, What, uh, my, eh? Hey, Greens, come yeah, on. Yeah, first yeah. of all, just uh, say uh, congratulations to you okay. and uh, your, your, your marriage, and congratulations to you also on okay. building your dream home. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. Yeah, just want to yeah. see if you want to share anything with the uh, members about your home. And okay. I want to know from you uh, if the video we did for you was good enough. Yes, yes, I, I, I showed it to quite a few people, and they did. Oh, wow, like, you did? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so they did like okay. And uh, um, yeah, so my my wife she went Saturday to take a look at it and talk with her for a while back. So it's, it's coming along good. He said it should be finished by April. <clears throat> so so I wanna you know hurry up and you know start moving in. <laughs> but uh, but it's it's looking good. It's looking good. It's a it's a circular home around the earth. And I, why I chose a circular home because it's to me it's, it's an African design. It's um, we went to a place in uh, Pram Pram and um, <clears throat> where they had a, 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 a quite a few circular homes. So I asked the owner, I said, why did he do it like that? He said, it's indigenous. So that made me feel good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I want to say, Bomani, like I said to you before, I look up to you. I like what you've been saying. So I'm going to stick with you. I'm sticking with you to the end. <laughs> That's right, it. Brother, appreciate uh, appreciate you, brother Kamal. Yeah. Uh, yes, you and I have yeah we have history on our side. I've known you for well over uh, eleven years, uh, going all the way back uh, to the those magical years in uh, twenty eleven. Yeah. Uh, when we just regrouped as Africa for Africans tours and just started on a new path. Uh, so uh, it's um, good to just see us, you know, still continue our dreams and the thing we talk about. I know uh, you see me struggle with going to Fiancra and dealing with that situation. And now we have a situation where we have control over. So I just wanna make sure I let everybody know I'm promising you and the others that are building, we're gonna get the lights and we're gonna get the wall. That way we have a more secure foundation to build around. Uh, so all of those things are in place and in plan. And then the roads definitely, especially the roads leading up there. So Anyone with road experience and everything, please place what you want to place in the group page and let us know. And we can just start uh, working on that to one of the um, uh, one of the committees, uh, which would be planning and development. So uh, those are things that we can do. But uh, yes, brother, appreciate you uh, this building and just keep building. And we're going to, you know, we're going to. The see how look next time we go to the property. But okay. anything else you want to share with anybody else, or any other recommendation you want to give to people who want who are looking for build it, builders? Um, no, I mean if you're interested in Ram Earth, you can contact Brother Wellbeck, and he can explain to you what what it's all about. <clears throat> but uh, I'm satisfied with the work you've been doing, and he's keeping me updated. Sometimes he sends me pictures and videos, and now I've got my wife that she can go and take a look at for herself. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, excellent. Looking good. Looking good. All right, excellent. Appreciate it, brother. That sounds good. All right, so let me meet you back. So right now, looking to just uh, get a few new people to talk and share certain things. But uh, one person that um, I want to see if she's open to talk, and Marcia, I just want to know if you're open to talking in this so you can share basically your experience 
and living in Ghana and the recognitions that you have for us as a group uh, that are moving there. All right, so, so that is Marcia. And while we wait for Marcia, let me see who else we have. All right, so I'm gonna have a, have a few people I got lined up and once I call your name, family, just uh, meet yourself. All right, so the two new people or new members, just want them to introduce themselves and say hello. So I'm gonna click on uh, ask to unmute for you, Leah. And then the next person will be Yakisha. All right, so it doesn't matter, it's just whoever uh, unmute himself first. Uh, just go ahead and talk, introduce yourself, and share some words with the group. Hello, hello, hello. Good night, everyone. This is Marcia. Uh, uh, greetings, Marcia. How you doing? How you been in Ghana? Yeah, well, it's been a while, you know. It's been a while. I haven't, I mean, I've been, I think I miss only one meeting, but, you know, even if I'm late, I try to, you know, log on. So much has been going on. So much has been going on, but I just keep a low profile because I'm not the one who's ready to jump to conclusion, you know. And well, I've gotten a few calls. Uh, you got what? I've gotten a few calls from okay. past members, you know, asking me about the um the legality of getting my my deed for the from a plot and and all of that stuff, you know. And I'm um, like, you know, that is something right now I don't wish to discuss. If I have to, I have to go to Bomani personally, I will. Yeah, so you, I'm not you have the... a right? Uh, I gave you a deed and a survey. Um, I told you I just wanted to do that for you ahead of time. And then you just, and then, true, so whatever yeah. you can build. But are you talking, are they saying that the land is not legal? Right. And um, you know. not legal. These are things that we have to talk about. So what I have is, um, is, you know, it's all illegal paperwork and it's one of those things where it's on the website, africaforafricans.org and then they click on Black Star. So um, when they go to all those, those links and details, it's there. Those paperwork is good as gold. Uh, it's emailed to everyone. It's also was emailed on this uh, conference call and things like that. So anyone can mm -hmm. go to the Lands Commission. So Right, I was told to do that, to go check it out because it's all not legal and all of that, you know? So, <laughs> oh goodness. Um, yeah, and the thing it's is- not, It's um, not nice, it's not nice what's going on. It's really not nice, you know? And I'm here in Ghana, um, let's see, uh, I came here in July, um, right? So it's like maybe five months thereabouts or, or seven, I don't know, I'm not keeping check right now. And I'm trying to get myself, um, I'm trying to get a footing of my own because to be honest, I really, I'm not working overseas, not getting a pension from the States, anything like that. I'm just, I just relocate with the intention to start from scratch because it's all starting all over again. And the someone said it's gonna be rough, but I'll make it. And, um, so certain things right now, I can't really touch. I can't really touch anything right now until I, um, I start getting some income coming in, which I'm working on feverishly, you know? So I am still a part of the group. I'm not going anywhere, you know? And all the misinformation and the discouraging energy and stuff, I, I, I can't deal with that. That's not me. I'm not into that negative vibes, no. I try to keep away from those things. I, I, I just try to keep away. So people calling me, I try, tell you the truth. It's hard to, to not answer my phone, but I've made my mind up like, I'm not gonna answer my phone. I can't deal with no nonsense right now. And if whatever Baman is doing, and he's been doing it for years, and if he is taking us for a dry ride, well, you know, there's a God upstairs there and see all the, Pain that it would be on you when people start crying for all these money that are being put in it. So 
you know, you, you, I don't think you would put your repetition on the line like that and to deceive, um, deceive um, so many people. So, um, but, uh, you know, continue to do what you're doing. Um, in due time, I will start my process of, you know, blocking up my land and, you know, whatever is old, I try to pay it up. But just see with me right now, because it's just me. I don't have a husband. I have not met Prince Charming as yet right now in Ghana as yet. <laughs> so I'm just taking my time, sorting myself out. And um, I just want to encourage all of us who are still a part of the group, because I was so surprised that the, the gentleman by the name of Ches, because I was looking at some of the clips um, you were posting and I saw him there talking and bigging up the community and stuff like that. But to my surprise, I'm like, what is this nonsense? What is this, this nonsense people are posting or saying or coming out of the group and all of that? You know, it doesn't make any sense. And I don't know what's up with black people on a whole, man. I mean, every other race is in front of us and we are just like crabs in barrel, you know? trying to just keep each other down instead of trying to move forward and make progress and try to build what the ancestors has already put in place for us to move forward with, you know? So that, that's my take right now, you know? All right, uh, Marcia, appreciate you. That is um, a real, that's a real situation because some of the people who have left the group or have been removed from the group, it's one of those things. I'm the administrator and I'm the one that invite everyone to the group for us to do business together. And I can't afford to let individuals destroy our group. So as you can see, they have ill intentions because they're still calling members and still harassing members and calling my people that I've introduced them to. <clears throat> and the thing of it is, uh, like I tell people, um, I'm a strong man. And um, you know that's why we're not inviting anyone else to this, to join this organization called Black Star Pan African Community. This is it. We are the we are the we are the ones. You know, we are the community. There will be no one else really added. And if they do get added, it's a serious process that the board will they'll go through with them. And then they'll be having to sign a situation where uh, the land will probably be like four thousand dollars, and they'll lose three thousand dollars. So. And if they sign it and to give the money up and they they quit, oh well. And then no, no, you know, and the same thing too. They can't come back and think they can shake us down and get that money back. It's just not happening. Non-refundables are non-refundables. Uh, so <clears throat> there's people like Lily K. Um, and this, I'm just gonna be real with people. Uh, she's gonna call you. Lily K is a sick, crazy woman who just literally obsessed with the COVID-19 situation. She, she do not want to take COVID tests and she do not want to come to Ghana. She wasted a whole year of my life and held up a few plots. Like she was going to be big willy and put money down on plots and things. And even when I added her to the group and things like that. But then when I removed her from the group, because at one point now, if you're not a member, we'll fill out application. We do have a few new people that will work in whatever and their situation is different. But um, if you, you know, if I added you to the group and after a while you don't fill out the application or put no money down, I can't keep you in a group and things like that because it's a private group and we're just based on that. So you try to just give one or two people a certain pass to, you know, for a few months and things like that. And, you know, that's why I tell people don't play around in the group. Everything needs to look uh, sophisticated and organized in the group. Uh, Marcia, let me just mute you, um, by the way. <clears throat> um, everything has to just be uh, structured to where when people come in the group and we have uh, the investors, they can see that we're having an organized group. We have conference calls. We have updates on myself and people, you know, do certain things. But um, some of those people were removed for many reasons. Chaz is a is a psychotic, crazy ass person. I cannot have somebody keep on that call himself the uh, uh, second vice president of our organization that keep on calling people late at night especially women and sending people all kinds of messages, just sending them messages and to see this a very creepy guy. And uh, literally um, the, you know, his downfall is that he collaborated with the people who sent police to come get me.
for the non-refundables. And he also was on some stuff like, I need to give them the money, give them the money and make peace with it. I'm not doing that. I'm from the streets. I'm a roughneck, rude boy. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't get extorted. We extort people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People don't get it confused. That don't, it, don't, it don't work like that, you know? I don't get extorted. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's what it is. I, I, you know, I work very hard to build phase two. Phase two is my masterpiece. And that's what I'm saying, family. We're it. Uh, phase two, the, the few members that we do have left that need to get a property in phase two, you know, you just, you get a property, but you just amongst other people. I mean, I can't say who's going to be your neighbors, what it is. Uh, can I carve out a certain location specifically for members? Absolutely. I, I'll definitely do that to where you just have your own space as members uh, as much as that. But some of the part, property we need to use as apartments. Uh, I wish our brother Peter Henry would be here because we need investors like that to really just you know, tackle on those kind of projects. And then when we're looking for buyers, you know, we're not, we can't bring them through a Black Star process. They're not going to qualify. And I'm just not trying to just go to all. I'm trying to make money for us at this point. Uh, we'll have a 15 acre command operation where we have our own medical, dental, all kind of stuff unique. It's like a military base, <laughs> dead serious, so everything on it for us. Um, and uh, everything on phase two will be more open to this in general society. So the third phase is what I want to talk to you about. Uh, right now, the goal is uh, is for me to <clears throat> work with the chief and the lands commission uh, and our attorney to find out which jurisdiction the chief has on the beach. And I want to cover whatever party has, I'm going to block it off completely with boulders and rocks. And then from one end to the next, and then we're just going to carve out our, our own little beach city. We're from villas, resorts, and then you have beach activities and so on. Um, there you have, you know, you have the docks, which will be on the left, farthest left, and also on the farthest right, um, and things like that. So I have a great vision of the money that uh, we're going to make in phase two. And I'm going to reinvest it just like everything else I've always done is get the money, money, honey, and reinvest it back into the operation. And um, and I just want to thank everybody that quit it. They, just, they really just gave us a good boost because you know, you had people like gave nine thousand dollars and only got back forty five hundred, which is a sweet deal for me. That's forty five hundred. You know, the thing of it is, once the money goes to the chief, it's gone. So, when you regenerate profits back, if you can, because this is not likely. You know, I'm always getting people. I can always replace people. That's one thing about me. I've, I, I'll go out there and find people. I'm the greatest recruiter. I find people. I got a recruiting engine uh, situation set up to get people. The only thing is. I spend time to talk with people to make sure things are clear and connect with them. And then somehow they just act like they just got amnesia and things like that. But uh, nevertheless, you know what I mean? It's what it is. But uh, phase three is going to be what I wanted to build, which is Negril. When I go to Negril this year, which is a private trip, so I'm not going to be telling people because I don't want nobody to send, you know, I don't want nobody to be, you know, it would just be literally private. So every, we'll show the footage. Um, it's my family reunion that I'm, putting together and putting together some power moves and putting some people together from Jamaica to where we're going to get them to connect to Ghana and be a part of our empire right there in phase two and things like that. Um, you know, so I got some good energy going there. We're going to definitely have some militant revolutionary Jamaican soldiers there on patrol throughout the town. Um, we're going to, you know, have some, some ganja growers because people like myself, I want to, I love to smoke me some good ganja and you know, some people like it for recreation purpose and things like that. So we're gonna make sure that we do some ganja farming without a doubt. So everybody gotta always understand that. So we're gonna make sure we have top notch stuff. And when it's legal, we're gonna get into the trade. Uh, we're gonna use it for, for production and things like that. So everything that we're doing, we get into the markets of agriculture, market of just import, export, market of this investing in technology. So Black Star Pan-African community, it becomes a, that investment energy beyond just myself. It becomes a network of us invest in like when i talk about peter henry he's in his network and my network coming together we're going to do those apartments and we're just going to you know uh, and so on and i'm putting a lot of my resources from other network which Af which is africa for africans so 
once we keep on doing that and we're flipping money, then we're building our own credit union. There's money in there for all of us, for anything that we need. No one will have any hardship. Everyone will be paid. Everybody will have life good. I'm telling you, we're down there. We have our yachts. We have boats and things like that. We have, you know, we have, you know, we have, you know, we have solar lights all over the place. We build, you know, free fresh road into the area where, you know, it's like an exclusive beach resort area. We, we just literally just, just a new way of life, you know, like a beach town. So that's the investment that I have, and that's the struggle with the chief. The goal is to always work with them and build with them because these are the deals now that you can get. You know, all those things are far-fetched. When we talked literally about um, the summer of 2019, but you, what you do, family, and I'm always telling anybody is build a relationship. So we keep on building relationships. We keep on talking, innovating. I got business advisors there and business advisors here and people that we talk. We work on strategies and we put things together because uh, it's an entity that we're pushing and we're going to get backed by a lot of people. A lot of people are going to back the operation that we have. And everybody that doubted us and talked big stuff about Oh, you don't know what you're doing. You, 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 you set up things all backwards. There's no lights there. There's no this. You, you know, you, you're housing men in, 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 in units and all, all kind of foolishness. You know, we know what we're doing. We're the best at what we've ever, ever done. I've studied this movement. Repatriation and Pan-African Black Power Nation, but I've studied this movement. And um, I'm looking young because I am young, but I started very young. That's why I showed those videos. And even this time, um, you know, uh, talking to my, um, you know, you know, talking to my son's mother, and and, it's just, and she, I sent her the video because I was that's where we all met in Egypt on that journey, and then I talked to my other brother from the UK. That's how we met. Also, uh, I met a bunch of people that were like we're friends for life. That's how I realized that these journeys are powerful doing Africa tours, uh, because those same people in 2004, you know, we all talk about you know the, the passing of Dr. Ranoko Rashidi, which is a great uh, teacher to all of us. Um, you know, you know, we talk, we, we are in like our mid and early 20s. Uh, so it's uh, powerful. So that's my Egypt uh, documentary I literally have on uh, YouTube for free. And that's one thing about me. I put out a lot of good production stuff, free stuff that, that we do research and things like that. We don't ask anybody for nothing. So when I tell people that my Indiegogo and we asking them for that money, you know what I mean? It's only to develop that high tech operation and it being a base for our people. If our people say, hey, I need somewhere to live. I need some housing. You know, bam, we just, you know, command is right there and we'll find somewhere in one of the phases or somewhere or one of the apartments and we'll get that person some work and we just get things going. I mean, we're going to build an a, a economy, a nice booming economy where you're raising the wage of how people live and then we, people are going to reinvest back into their self. So you're going to grow that entire area. It's, it's black power economics beyond what people can ever imagine. You can't ever imagine that you have a network of black people like us. We own factories, we own resorts, we own all kind of high tech stuff. We are training technicians to maintain all of the things. Cause you know, the most important thing in operation is maintenance, you know what I'm saying? Being a naval tactician and a technician with planes and working on them things, maintenance, you know, maintaining things, then things fall out of the sky, they, they malfunction when it's time to go shoot some other jets out of the, the sky or bomb, you know, the, or buy, buy, you know, or bomb the Japs or, or something like that. You know what I mean? It's realistic operation. Uh, so what I'm telling you is um, the future that we have is pain. Like Lennon and Carmen, they followed a program that we work. So we, we're always evaluating like, whoa, Lennon and Carmen came on a trip. They literally moved in the worst time of COVID. And we sent builders there to her, Barbara and Catherine. And this Catherine, uh, Arnold and Barbara, just like the snakes they are, literally just sabotaged my operation and went and built in Winneba. And Lennon and Carmen, the beautiful couple, literally went in and built that Ram here house. And it's beautiful that they build that because it shows that, you know, you know and you know, the thing of it is, the, the people who wanted to go ahead and build, we made, we worked very hard to get paperwork and everything organized. I put, I pressured the surveyor, the pressure the lands commission, paid people off extra money, did all kind of stuff. And then they, they stabbed me in the back and just end up gossiping about me and things like that. No, and so when, when I'm talking about the foolishness that people do, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. No one is going to play around and I'm chopping heads off. And that's what I did. And I appreciate everybody in the group now because we have a beautiful group of the group of people that we need to run this operation good. And I wanted to just 
thank everybody for the support. I won't uh, push on any further and I'll just um, open up for a few more people to speak um, and uh, a few more new people introduce themselves. So next person I'm asking is Yakisha and Leah. Hello, Bill and Monica, can you hear me? Greetings, my sister. You're open to doing an introduction and talk about your journeys to Africa and back and why you, why you look to this, connect with us and be a part of the future and um, talk about the other options that you saw if there were other options out there. And just kind of educate us on your journey because you did a special journey that you really just got a chance to just explore Africa and then kind of see and feel where you want to end up being versus just making a quick decision and just doing Ghana or doing Tanzania. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jackisha. Um, I've been knowing Bo Money for quite a while now, for a couple of years. Um, I started my, uh, my first trip to the continent was in um, was it November of 2018. And uh, my, my journey to the continent was that of a a call for my ancestors to return uh, back to uh, from where I think I come from. Uh, not Ghana, my maternal lineage is from Cameroon. So I did my African ancestor DNA, so that's why I found out my maternal lineage was from uh, there. Uh, uh, also, the course of the years, um, I've had different um, I'm a spiritual person, so I've had different people who come to me on spiritual levels telling me that uh, my place is for me to uh, take a trip to the motherland and uh, to continue on the, the healing of my ancestors. Um, I uh, have been uh, researching and getting into traditional healing for quite some years now. Um, especially after having a stroke at the age of 34, uh, I really got involved into uh, the natural passive community. Um, so um, I've been in school for nutrition. Um, currently, I am uh, finishing up my certification as a, a natural health and wellness consultant. Uh, so that most most definitely something that I'll be uh, dealing with uh, in the uh, the Pan African, uh, Black South Pan African uh, community. Um, but for as my travels to uh, the continent outside of Ghana, I've been to Ghana twice 2018 and then 2019. Um, and then I talked to Bomani and told him that before I, I make a, a definite uh, decision on where I wanted to try to build a home or where I want to stay. Uh, let me travel a little bit. I know I always wanted to go to the east uh, side of uh, Africa. So I decided to go and visit Tanzania. Uh, in July uh, 2020, uh, once, um, and, and many, um, uh, African Americans kind of did the same thing uh, because Tanzania was the first African country, uh, many of you may know, to open their border uh, to fly internationally um, uh, during COVID. They, because Tanzania, they, they never closed down. It's just that once the, the U.S. and um, allow for many of us to travel and leave the country during that time, many of us, we went to Tanzania. So, I end up staying in Tanzania um, since uh, July, was July the 23rd of 2020. I stayed there and um, I was in Dar es Salaam, a uh, major commercial uh, port. Um, I, I, I can't say I didn't, didn't really miss much of infrastructure. Uh, from the US because they have their own infrastructure too. It just depends on where you live. Um, they have their sidewalks and things there. Generally, more mostly in the in the rural area, uh, standing around the local people, you may see some uh, may have some kind of uh, like uh, not necessarily say potholes, but because 
you are living on on the coastline where I was living at the the foundation is that of sand so when you're living on that kind of uh terrain sometimes the ground can sink a little bit it can shift and, and things of that nature so they would have to try to find different ways of trying to pack the sand down where it was sort of hard enough where they can drive their vehicles through there. Um, it, it was an interesting um, situation. Um, I met some beautiful people there. Um, most of the time, uh, me um, staying there, um, I mean, I, I stayed with the local people. I mean, I hung out, I went dancing, drinking. I mean, hell, I had a hell of a time. I, I enjoyed myself. And um, I write, and I got a student visa while I was there. So uh, I, I think I, I uh, spoke to Brother um, uh, Kamau in the uh, in the group in uh, Swahili. So uh, I do speak a little uh, uh, Swahili uh, from there. So I'm actually I'm still in school. <laughs> uh, so it's cool. It's, it's easy like to learn so if any of you want to learn um it's in my african language it's not a complete african language because it's it's a, it's a mix of arabic bantu a little bit of english so it's not completely african but it is it's very easy to pick up on if you want to learn the swahili and most of us that do kwanzaa every year uh kwanzaa thing first so you're speaking swahili already and many just don't, they don't know that they're speaking Swahili. But um, I, I found that the the environment there um, on the ground in Tanzania for the mindset of people was not on the level in which I'm on. Um, I, I am a, a Pan-Africanist. Um, I, I, believe, I believe before I even knew what Pan-African was, <laughs> at, the young, at the young age, I, I used to always get in trouble in school because I would always ask questions about why white people doing this and I don't like this white person. I never would do the pledge allegiance to the flag and I stayed getting in trouble in school. So I, I believe I was a revolutionary since I've been here. So it was, the, the spirit was already in me. So I will, regardless of where I'm at in my life, I will always be a part of the um the unity of my people but i came to realize and i and i learned a lot from me staying in uh tanzania um i just got back here to the state uh let's see on the 20th i just landed here january the 20th back here i went back and forth to the states like uh two times of the time span of me being there July the 20th till today. And uh, like I said, I met some great people, uh, but however, the mindset of uh, many of the people uh, there, um, it's a, a, a somewhat a, a very interesting of uh, the docile mentality of uh, some of our, our, our brothers and sisters there. And, uh, and and I can't put it at their fault. It's, you know, these things are systemic. Uh, but it's it, it's not conducive to the point to where I would want to live, do business. Um, I tried doing business there, uh, and um, it's just it's so much red tape when it comes to trying to. Uh, Get get a. Uh, I had no problem with renting. The renting was easy. Um, um, my rent was like say roughly around 150 U.S. dollars a month. Um, that, that's I've never spent beyond 200 U.S. dollars a month since I've been living there, except for the first month when I went to the uh, the country and I didn't know any better. I stayed at an Airbnb because I didn't I didn't know anybody there. Um, except for a few people that I met on Facebook or YouTube. But I've always stayed in contact with both money. And then uh, through the course of the time that uh, uh, I've been there, Bomani decided to start bringing us to it there. So 
I was always excited to see him and his tour group come and, you know, and I would always try to, you know, tell some of the locals or who Bo Money is, what he stands for, what he's doing and things like that. And, you know, and connecting with some of the, uh, 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 one of my, my good brother, Big, uh, uh, he's been, he's a, a Jamaican from um, uh, UK. He has uh, two kids by a ten, Tanzanian lady. He's uh, been doing business there. He has his own bar there. So, you know, he's been doing pretty good for himself. So, yeah, I've been around some good people. And uh, regardless of the obstacles, you know, I don't let that stop me. I don't let that get in my way. I would encourage anybody. Um, when, when you're when you're building a uh, an empire, when you're you're destined for greatness and you're doing great things, you're going to always have a, a backlash. Things are not going to come easy to you. You know, it's not because um, there are some people just um, they can't help themselves. They, you know, this is this is what they're they're designed and, and set out to do. So basically, you just have to just stay the course and stay focused. That's mainly that's what it is. Stay the course, stay focused. What are you in this for? What are you part of this community for? I mean, that's it. Forget what it, you know. Me, I'm not the type of person where I miss the message because of what the messenger does or how they live their lifestyle. And I, I don't care about that. The main my, my focal point is is what is their message. Is that is that the message is spot on? I can I can learn something from an alcoholic, a drunkard. <laughs> if the message is, is right, if their message is spot on, then I'm on it. I'm with it. So I, I don't follow the um, as I told about money. I don't follow the YouTube warriors, keyboard warriors. You know, they just all they do is sit around on YouTube and they just do little nonsense. Uh, people send me, you know, YouTube videos about Bo money and things like that. And I'm like, if you're not talking about building, if you're not, if you're not talking about doing business, making money, black economics, don't contact me. And and we have the same situation. Um, like I see Bo money dealing with with people being stupid, doing idiotic things, things like that. Even when you try to help them, they still do it. You know, just silly. And people like that that was in Tanzania, we were part of a group and a WhatsApp group, and they were more focused on America and COVID than they were trying to build and make a life for themselves in Tanzania. I said, like, that's stupid as hell. If you're going to focus and you're going to build or you're going to live in the past, you're going to live in the trench. And I'm always reminded of, of our ancestors the ancestors who went through the, 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 the Underground Railroad when they were trying to free the slaves. They had shotguns, not for, <laughs> not for the ones who would come for them, pretty much, but for the black people who would get so scared, they would run back and they'll tell where they were and where they're going in the Underground Railroad. So sometimes on this journey, we had to cut our own off. It just is what it is. You you have to cut them off. If you find one that's weak, uh, get rid of them quick. But they get, they're gonna kill your operation. They they will sabotage. So I'm not gonna speak too long, but that's pretty much that's me. Um, I don't I don't talk much. The only reason why I'm really saying something now because um, my good friend uh Bo Money he put me in a group, and so I like to be respectful to you know, uh, do it if he asks me to do and introduce myself so you guys know me. Some of you already know me, uh, uh, Brother Kofi, Brother Charles. Yeah, some of them already know them from 2018 when we went on the, uh, on the, uh, the tour in uh, Ghana. And, and we've been cool ever since, ever since. You know, one thing about it is that when you, when you are chosen in the spirit, when you're chosen in the spirit, the chain will never be broken. You'll be connected with these people for life. If it's meant for you to be connected, you'll be there for life, hands down. And I, and many of us, we live our own life. We get married, do this and other, but we still, we find a way to connect with each other. 
even uh, brother, brother uh, 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 Cozy came to see me uh, in Texas, here in Texas where I met one time, you know, traveling. So, you know, you guys just stay focused, stay strong, and keep your keep your your mind stay on why you are part of this community because at the end of the day that's all that matters why you are part of this, of this community and put your best foot forward and you know let the dead bury the dead man let all these naysayers do what they do that's their job you just get about your business you know let them become your 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 escalator be your ladder uh, up to the next level to your success or where you want to be or where you need to be, you know, in this life, in this community and in this life, you know, so peace and blessings to my family. All right, I appreciate you, Jakisha, good energy. And we have a lot of wonderful things that we all going to be working on and building this energy. As you can see, family, we have a lot of the, we have the right people and the right energy. Um, and sometimes that's what it uh, takes. It takes uh, going to war, which you end up having casualties and the people who are remaining, you know, we do what we need to do. Uh, so Leah, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and then um, give an introduction. Hello, family. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, absolutely. Rock on with your bad self. My name is Leah Taylor. I'm originally from California. I retired in 2016 from a horrible, racist, evil job at a Southern California University in, in 2016 again at the age of 50. And I moved to Georgia in 2020. Actually, I left California on the holiday, their holiday, July 4th, 4th of July, 2020. And came to Georgia and have been here since 2020. I like it um, a lot. It's, it's a beautiful area, beautiful country. The people are pretty cool, but you can find good and evil people in every area, anywhere where you go, planet Earth. I'm currently working part-time to supplement my small pension. Um, I'm studying for my real estate exam. I went to Africa my first time in 2019, December, year of return with Africa for the Africans, Bamani's group. And I had a wonderful experience where the people, and that, that ever-present sunlight and heat made me feel immortal, made me feel superhuman. I'll never forget the experience of the people, the places, the things I learned, the historical things, the good, the bad, the sad, and, and the brilliant. Um, I've always been pro-Black, I guess you can say, never knowing what, what it was, no name for it and been criticized by society and family for being pro-Black to, to that way, whatever that way is. But um, I love my people, I love us, I love being Black. Um, seeing those Africans there, they don't know that they're superhuman because of all that melanin and that powerful sun. Um, can't wait to get back. Um, currently, uh, I'm looking to do projects with Bamani to raise funds for different projects, if I can, any way I can help. And that's about it in a nutshell, unless you have some questions. Um, I'm into investing. I'm still learning, but I, I like to dabble in investments. I sold a condo in California trying to get, get up out of there. So I had a little bit of change to to invest and play around with that. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the future and, and the prospects for our people, I think look excellent. And we gotta hurry up and get out of this place because they trying to shut it down. 
<laughs> they trying to shut this thing down so that if you don't play by their rules, you ain't leaving, you're not moving. But so we got to hurry up. And I was planning on buying a plot of land in the, in the um, Black Sun in a year, about a year. I think I would have my finances and everything and my ducks lined up in a row to buy comfortably and live there. But since things are going the way they are with COVID and rules and regulations, you got to take the jab or else, you know, threats. It's time to speed up. It's time to hurry up. Get this thing going. Get this thing rolling. Don't wait. Don't pause. Don't think about it. Don't have any doubts. Don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt us. Don't doubt Bamani. Get your, get your wheels under your feet and roll. <laughs> That's how I feel. It's time to roll. It's time to go. No doubts. No fear. Just go for it. Go with it. Go now. Because they're trying to shut this thing down. It's like, uh-uh, they're not stopping me. They're not stopping this. They're not stopping us. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at in my mindset. And I'm looking forward to working with you all and making this thing great and go forward. Thank you. All right, appreciate your sister, appreciate energy. So family, that's what we're doing. We're just sharing uh, and introducing ourselves since we have a stable group of uh, 50 plus uh, members. Uh, and uh, we have some who have been with us a long time and then some that are new and some that are just showing up as of recent. All right, so anybody else that would like to just do an introduction or say hello? All right, Jai, I'm gonna unmute you and I'm gonna see if I can unmute Sean. So, so both of you, all you have to do is uh, unmute yourself, uh, Sean. Greetings, Jai, greetings, how are you? Jai, you, you, you muted yourself back. And let's try this again. Uh, let's click uh, unmute and uh, we can hear you. And also, Sean, you can join in. All right, Green Joy, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, how are you today? Okay. Welcome to the Black Star Pan African Community uh, Conference Call Meeting. I'm happy that you can join us. Yeah, I'm coming tired, you know? You 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 you've been working all day long on the plantation. That's right, <laughs> on the plantation. Till everybody marries on top of the plantation. They probably, yeah, they probably think you have a crazy son, right? Oh, the people are <laughs> now. Them not here. Yeah. When they tell people about me that I go to Africa and I, I do, uh, I'm doing land development and all kind of stuff. People, I think it's like some kind of urban legend. Like, this, who is this Bomani guy? <laughs> AK. It's before. Them like, oh man, them now not go Africa, no sir. So, so them say, so them now go there, sir. And then some people change their mind. Yeah. So, no, them never. No, some of them, them never. Before them never interested, but now them were like try to try to get you know, interested. I guess them see the world around now. Them would have liked to go there. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to have a nice community. But Jai, can you turn on your video, please? I'm going to video that. And then also, can you see my can you see my background of my beautiful office? I saw it. Yeah. Um, see now. I can't say there's something. I'm going to have a million there, too. Hold on. Hold on. That's unbelievable. I can't say Shana. You got to turn the video on. Yes, yeah, soon. Wait there. Shana, I'm going to have a glass. Shana, can you turn it on? All right, cool. I can, I can see you. I can I see, see a minute. Greetings, Shana. You see me now? See me now? See me right oh, wow. here? Yeah, yeah. Wow, you got to come. You got to. You, you, you like Come you, here, Omari. Come here. You like you yeah. for, for night for the night? Yeah. So you don't have to show us. Uh, yeah. We remember you're live and people are watching. Yeah, with my balling. Yeah, yeah. So you, may, you may have to. Okay. <laughs> You want to give me an ad for put on? Yeah, um, let me cover that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, let me put on an ad. 
Yeah, uh, that way um people uh, bridge, are... having a bridge. Yeah, absolutely. And the backwards. Yeah. What's and... your here for me? Okay, we can all see you. So everybody see me already? Yeah. But may I put that on my ear? See I, here now? Yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, I stopped your video. Um unfortunately, um it, you know, it's too private of a setting to do the video. But um just want to um, just find out from you, uh, how is everything sound so far as what we've been talking about in the group about building this community in reference to just staying here and not having any investments? It sounds good. It sounds good. It sounds good. That's, uh, that's it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so perfect. So within the next uh, several years, we can all move there and enjoy life. Uh, because right now, the next few years, the goal is to just build everything that we need to build. You know, the most important thing you're building is a business and a community center. And that's going to have all the things that we need there. And okay. we're gonna the road construction. We're going to learn how to build good roads. Uh, so okay. that way we can just have, you know. So ultimately, we're going to create a nice little smart, going? smart little development very secured um so never never let's uh, so anything you'd like to share with a, with a group of people with... There's something there? not really <laughs> it's, 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 i'm here also turn on I'm the video in the back turn on the video you don't have to turn on the video you can turn on the video Shana. go ahead you can turn Call down the video you can just huh all right there you go you can turn on turn the video down. now Oh my gosh, video. Not have much to say. Maybe me run out of things. Hi, everybody. How are you guys tonight? Yes, yes, yes. You got to tell everybody about your background, what you're into, what you're about, what you have. Oh, tell them, Shana. All the things you're going to be doing. And then you can just enjoy. I'm not saying nobody. Yeah, you can tell everybody the same. We can all see you. So I'm going to stop. Yeah. I'm going I'm to stop and both of Hello. you tell everybody about your life and your path. Jai my life <laughs> <laughs> tell them about our journey from jamaica to brooklyn okay <laughs> yes so family this is my mother uh joy brown and this is my sister shana brown we are the brown hello family. okay so um i was born and raised in brooklyn new york um I guess I'm a math, I'm, I have a math background. I love math. Both of my degrees are in math. So um, that's a way I plan on contributing um, in Africa when we make it to actually be there. Um, currently I am a software engineer. So I, I found my way into computers and working with computers. Um, I have two kids, I have two boys. Um, so I plan on taking them with me next time I go. Because the first time I actually went, I went 2016. I think that was the 10th year anniversary. And we went to Ghana. So that's actually when I was first pregnant with the first, my first boy. So I've never been back ever since, but I definitely want to go back and take the kids and let them experience it. Because it was definitely a good experience, good food, good vibes. I learned a lot. The culture, everything was beautiful, everything. So... Yeah, I'm definitely excited about what's going on and how this community is going to build, how we're building this community, how everything is going to be available for everyone from education to health care. So I'm definitely excited. And yeah, I look forward to meeting you guys. I excellent, Shana. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate it. That is my master genius uh, sister, Shana. Uh, so yes, Shana, I, I appreciate you coming and dealing with Bomani Dakari at that first. <laughs> I, know, I, I, know, I know he drove you mad, but uh, yeah, I have my own Bomani now, Omari. <laughs> <laughs> so it was practice. <laughs> All right, that's excellent. So, Jai, you want to tell everybody about your background, where you're from, and my background, where? what you do? Kingston, Jamaica. I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. I was born in Jamaica. Kingstown, come to the United States. Oh, hold on. 
Okay. About 1985. And I'm here still. So I'm learning. I don't know much about Africa and the culture, but I've been there twice. So Ghana, South Africa. Yeah, yeah, it was Ghana, Togo. I've been, a, I've been a couple of places. Yeah, Ghana, Togo, Benin, and South Africa. Right. And then you're going to come to Tanzania this time around in November, right? You, oh, you okay. Dana, I'm going to give you, I'm, I'm going to give you a nice wicked deal. <laughs> Tanzania, I'm, I, I'm working. I'm a CNA. I'm working in the nursing home. Talk about your trips. Taking about sick people and stuff like that. So you did what you did with COVID. After see it goes, huh? Are you dealing with COVID patients? Yeah, sure we. Yeah, everybody have COVID so far. <laughs> it's two years of COVID. I'm still here. And they go rock on. They go, they go family. Uh huh. So you have to just deal with it. That's it. If people get sick, what we're gonna do? Kill them? <laughs> have to take care of them. <laughs> Bring them back to you know. So from COVID start, we didn't even know nothing about it. Nobody was testing. We was working. We don't know who have who don't have. It was just a big mess. But so far, you know, we still there. A lot of us. Nobody. No, not much people die. Just like the older folks. And then the second wave come up now. This what they call it? The Omicron? How much? About a hundred waves. Yeah. This new one that come up now, everybody just gets sick and but we're still here, we're dealing with it. That's all we have to do. We have to just deal with it when it comes. Whatever happens, happens. We have to just take care of ourselves. As they say, wash your hands, sanitize. And that's what we're doing. So how was your trip? What was your first trip to Africa? Oh, no. My first trip to Ghana, it was very nice, interested. I love it. I love all the trips I go on. South Africa, ooh, we have a, it was amazing. Brazil, same thing, amazing. Yeah, yeah I keep on forgetting. All we the went trips. To Brazil. We went to Brazil. That uh, was cool. <laughs> yeah, Brazil was nice. You remember, remember we was on that beach, Ipanema? Wasn't that a nice beach? Yeah. Yep, you, lovely you, beaches. The beach you, was nice. The first beach we, had, we the, the first day we went on the beach there. What they call that one? That one was Coco Cabana. The Coco Cabana, that long stretch of beach. But the Ipanema yeah. was more nice and fancier. Yeah, and that, they have a lot of restaurants. Yeah, that was so amazing. Eh? So, it was incredible. Look at the landscape. Yeah. Remember the cable cars? Woohoo! Yeah, Brazil was like. I still have a 10 year visa for Brazil. Yeah, we gotta go back. <laughs> we gotta go back and hang out again in Brazil. Yeah, all the trips, all of the trips, them I love them. Yeah, but that's what we do. I learn a lot of things, things, you know. They even the culture, fire. the people, whatever. It's, it's it's great, great trips. So perfect, Brazil, South Africa, Ghana, Togo, Benin, five countries. So yeah, you know, isn't that awesome. wonderful? So thank you for your support. You know, what I'm saying that's my mother right there, family, very supportive and everything. And we're gonna make sure she get a nice trip to Tanzania with us. And everything, um, and 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 take her off babysitting duty because little man, you know, in a, little man is too much sometimes. So we just got to give uh -huh. him his own room, let him do his thing, him and his friends and his games. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so so that way you can come hang out with us at nightlife. Okay. So you and Shayna, right? Shayna, you, you leave uh -huh. to watch other little boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I miss big notes so or? I guess he could like do that. Huh? Uh, but money that Kari can watch your two little boys. Right. Yeah. <laughs> These two is a handful. <laughs> when is Tanzania? When you going to Tanzania? Uh, November 17th. Oh, Tanzania, the 17th, November. Yeah, don't okay. have the same time frame. November 17th. Mm. You know, all that mm. stuff is you know, right there on the website and you know we, we can talk about it anything but uh, that's one idea i know it's a bunch of trips because right now i'm trying to work on the july journey that we have just trying to take advantage of that opportunity and hopefully it'll work so i'm going to be working on the itinerary this week for our, our family reunion uh journey to jamaica 
the grill. Okay. You know your father is down there. Tell you right? Yeah. Uh, no, he didn't tell me. Uh, he probably told me quick, but so that it, yeah, that's one thing about him. He, he left know. yesterday. Yeah, that's one thing about him. He don't play around. He loves some Jamaica. He don't, <laughs> don't go nowhere else. Uh, <laughs> right. That's, 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 that's why I'm happy that, that we went crazy. To but that's why I'm happy that we went to England that year. I forgot what year it was. Like 2000. Oh, yeah. It was like 2003, uh, the early years of my when I worked at airlines. So I that saw was, picture. we went. That that was good that we went on that journey because we were able to just hang out. Uh, but outside of that, yeah, you know, you know that's it, that's that's it, man. Is love for Jamaica, Jamaica. Yeah, him gone dressed up in a KC clothes, <laughs> two case in purple. <laughs> It, 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 off in purple and take it, picture and put on Instagram. Take his Kingston College, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. um, alumni very serious. You know, some people like our friends here that they're Morehouse alumni. They take it serious. They are into all of the events and everything. So, mm -hmm. same you know, going to some Casey. Where did I football yeah. match? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, never, nevertheless, I'm gonna plan this thing uh, out nice. Um, I'm gonna enjoy it, um, and it's something I work very hard towards. Uh, so I'll be inviting a few of our families uh, from your from your side and Charlie's side, and then some people may not get certain invitation. But you know, you know, you can only do so much. You know, some people are gonna take it personal, but then again, you know, people are always taking things personal. But we're gonna do a nice little a nice little thing. But if you know, some people are just gonna have to come up with the money and. If they can't stay at that resort, then we just find them some something close by that is working their budget. But I want to stay somewhere really fancy this uh this real resort and get a nice little you know get a nice little wedding package and things like that. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna talk more about that uh in our private conversation. So uh, Jai, okay. anything else here? Uh, you told you mentioned you're a nurse. Can you explain more about uh, your nurse experience and how? You got into the. I'm a CNN, I'm a the and nurse assistant. That's then, it. I'm not. Oh, no, 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 no. And then I'm, I just wanted you to connect with Maureen. Maureen is the person that's working in the medical and wellness committee, and she's reorganizing things. And so your input will be vital to her. So just go ahead and just give an overview of uh, your journey uh, to what you do and how you got started and what you're doing currently and, and how you can work with uh, the medical committee. In uh in the Black Star group. Okay, I'm a um, certified nursing assistant. I'm working in the nursing home, like what some um, 17 years now. In yeah, but before that, I used to do what I used to do child care. I do that for about 14 years. So um. Just a second. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm choking. <clears throat> yeah. So I don't know. Whatever, whatever I can do, I will do. Oh, you could hear me? Yeah, I, can, uh, I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. yeah perfect. So uh, I'll link you and send you marine information. And then also there's a link in the uh, group page right now that say um, um, medical and wellness committee. So that's what we're doing right now. And that, mm -hmm. that building is going to be in phase two, but also the community center would have a space where it's kind of like everything is based on our remember Naval Command on a ship. And then, so you're gonna have space where you have your medical area and things like that in the, the 15 acres, all those things will be there, but we're gonna have a public program of everything that we're doing in phase two, like oh, you know, public medical mm -hmm. facility. So it's publicly available for everybody there. In the yeah. Um, Is Maureen a nurse? Is she a nurse? Maureen, uh, you'd have to answer that, uh, Maureen. Maureen? Uh, uh, Maureen is probably not on because, of, um, there you go, Maureen. Um, let me just um but she so okay. she's gonna run that why am I sure it feels so uh yeah so yeah she's on there and you guys once you're in the group chat you can communicate and text also to each other 
Uh, so what you're doing is just talking about different ideas of plans uh, as mm. something to where we'll be able to just provide in-house direct medical solutions for ourselves and for everyone in the town in uh, phase two. Oh. Land. So phase two land becomes very important because we can build factory shops, stores, business, and then it's also close to the beach. And then um, my goal literally now is to still work to find out if the chief owns any beachfront property and if so, get all of it in a deal, have him sign a memorandum of understanding which I'd like to sign, give him a deposit on it and make payments for maybe a five or 10 year payment plan or whatever payment plan we can work out. But my goal is to get access to the beach and that entire area. My goal and vision is to build our own Negril Jamaica right there. Yeah, that would be good, you know? And then we're gonna have our own path of where the road come in and it takes people to where we are. And then it's just a nice exclusive area of, of all the things that we like to have in the, in the grill where you know where you have this that tropical environment and whatever trees you have to grow, you grow and set up. So that's yeah, what I plan on doing. And then you have condos and high rise and things like that where people can, you know, it's kind of like, where my, remember how Brazil was. And you know, so a combination of like my two favorite places, which is a Rio de Janeiro, um, Brazil and uh, Negro Jamaica. Um, I've been okay. through different ways of how I'm going to get investors to come here to the office and talk with them or meet them places. And then they're going to build um, a setup with us to where all they have to do is once they see the land, see everything in the vision, and they, you know, they, this is what they do. We'll sit down with the attorney and we'll sit down with the chief and other people that we have the consultant. And we're just signing everything and making those deals work. And this, uh, that's it. We're the ones working on it. The surveyor does the job and he work with the lands commission and that's it. And then anything that needs to be in, built or done, we can get it done easy because we don't have no bureauc bureaucratic system. I am the one that's in, I'm the one that's running the command of the whole situation. The chief is someone that he is just giving me an exclusive right to do what I need to do because he knows what we're building because we have worked on it. And he wants us to build industries and build opportunities for the young, for the youths and create opportunities in the area. And he wants to see his community, his family land develop. And he tr trusted me on a grassroots level to do it. And he was impressed once we paid. The video no, the video is fine. Uh, you don't have to have the video. Uh, they were just to uh, do an introduction. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so um, once we pay him the first $70,000 for the uh, phase one land, 15 acres, and pay that in full uh, within a few months, because you know, it was dropping them like $10,000 a month. And that's when I was just collecting money for the plots and everything. So it's the same process that we use. Uh, we collect the money and we make payments on the land and then we invest in it and we flip the investment and things like that. Uh, so I uh, tell people this, um, wise people to stay the course and stay committed to what we're building. And then watch it grow because Jai, remember, it's just funny too. Remember when uh remember when I first started talking to you about Garvey Town and then Garvey Town is dead and we just yeah and then now you see what we're building on our own where we run things. Right. Yeah, it's, it's always better if we as a people organize amongst ourselves and do the things that we see rightfully to do together. And that's what I'm telling my black people all over the world, let's do this together. And anybody that get in my way, I'm also telling them, I'm going to run you over. We know I've, nobody's going to destroy this movement. This is not, you know, we're not going to let uh, what happened to Garvey in the 1920s happen to us in the 2020s. And that's why I have corporate and defense attorneys. The corporate attorneys cover all of the legal stuff that we do in every single paperwork to a T. Everything. You... you the lawyer, you know, whenever, whenever he hears me and see me, he smiles because all he knows is ching, 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 ching. ching. That's, yeah, all, that's, that's, that's to get all money. These people, the people know. They like, they like, um, to the far, they, they, they defend me to the highest level because they, I'm, I'm their bank, and it's not funny. But all the money we collect, people think that I'm living rich. I tell people, you send money here, I put it to work. You know, what I'm saying all I have is a. <laughs> Is a, a 2010 Toyota Camry, paid in full, and I have a small house here with a, and then it's just all been modified to run Bomani Technology and Africa for the Africans towards investment and now uh, Black Star Community. Uh, so uh, it's, um, 
I, you know, asked my brother Azibo how much money I've sent him to like get the land clear, to, to get the house uh, lease paid for and everything. You know, it, it's, it, it, this is an honest man in, about his business. So allegations about me saying that I'm doing scam, I'm taking people money. You know, none of that. The only people money that I'm going to take is the people who perform acts of treason, literally sow secrets and betray us and sabotage our operation. They get nothing. Their property gets sold. Anything they have to get sold, and they get nothing. They get the finger, and they can. They know what they can do. I don't need to say it. And uh, the people who we have deals with that um, didn't want their plots anymore, and they said, "Hey, I understand the agreement was the agreement, and you know, we the payout is what is written." So we have covered everything. And as of this summer, I'm gonna have everybody paid off. And only people now I gotta worry about is the people who. Uh, you know, the, you know the, the the traders that I've blocked out, they're going to come at me with lawsuits and come at me with different things if they have the balls. Uh, so I got my lawyers here in Georgia because some of the people are from Georgia. You know, they, they got on the phone. As a matter of fact, they all got on the phone and got on one of my live calls and everything and bashing me and everything because I won't give that uh, wicked, crooked eye uh, devil Barbara Sutton back her money. She gets nothing. Barbara Sutton sold out intelligence information to one of another member that went the hell off and caused a ripple effect and caused me to lose tens of thousands of dollars. And in that situation of treason and wickedness, uh, if you're pulling out, you get nothing. But however, Barbara, the same thing as just like that wicked, crooked, um, hunchback uh, uh, person, Delta Force Mimi, just like her, she literally, uh, they have the same deal. They have one plot in phase two, and they can get that plot. They're not going to badger me for money. You know? And so that's another person that's doing it. So in this situation now, the hell with Barbara Sutton. I don't like that and respect that. You know what I mean, I try to work a deal out with her. I thought we were cool and everything. I help her get things set up. She, you know, she was supposed to build a house on the property. Yeah, let me meet you. And then I'm going to say, because I'm, you know, when I get, when I get hot and I get excited, and I get into this flow, I like to just kick my flow of things. Um, so I'm, I'm saying, sharing this on a recorded call to everyone to understand that I'm not going to put up with anybody foolishness and things. You know what I'm saying? My, the biggest investment in this entire operation comes from myself and my family. We put together all of what we physically invested in it. And I'm not going to hear the nitpick about certain things because it's not all about that. I'm talking about my direct blood family. You know, and things like that. And my, you know, I'm, I'm you know, my, my Jamaican brothers that me and them are like blood brothers, you know. So then the reality of it is we're doing this for us as a people, you know what I mean? And I don't mind other people joining us, but if they're gonna join us, they're gonna have to respect this. They can't be sabotaging my operation and think everything is cool, or every minute flip around and thinking this is the bank. As soon as the video came out with Negro Pian, um, I had people that were set to get 50% refunds call me and, and send me a message saying, well, money, I want a 100% refund and, and said some nasty names that I'm not going to repeat to them. And I mean, it hurt me I mean, because I'm like, oh man, they saw the video that Delta Forbes uh, promoted with Negro Pian to say that you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a fraud and the land is not always in all kind of, first they say that the, the, the chief gave me the land. Now they're saying that the land is a fraud. Oh, they don't even know to, to, to say and make up their mind. But like, you know, like I always say, people, I got more documentation and more organized information than anybody ever that have done this business. You go to other companies and ask them, can I get this document? They take, you know, I was like, everything is there. It's even in digital format and everything. I have a folder, one folder here. Where if you come to the office, it's just given to you and you flip in there, it's all there. So, um, you know, we're running this operation to an organized T and we're not going to let crooked eye retards like Barbara Sutton uh, extort me for money or that hunchback uh, devil um, Delta Forbes literally shake me down. So that one call the police, this one here in the state of Georgia where I'm at, she can't do that. So what she's gonna do is go to the courts and she's gonna file that she gave me money for land and then she wanted it back. And all the courts are gonna say, well, you, the, the man, you, 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 you paid money for land and the man has land he's offering you. He has not said that he's not offering you any land. The land is right there. All of the paperwork is right here. It shows it, ma'am, 60 acres, phase two. This is your email. You said that it's okay, move you to phase two. And now you're telling this man, you want him to give him the money back. So the thing if it is, yo, 
I'm a roughneck on the street and I'm a roughneck in court and I'm a roughneck on the battlefield of tactical warfare. You know what I'm saying? Everything with me, you come right here, you see battleship and uh, chess. You, I'm a tactical person. Um, you, 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 know? Um, you know, things like that. And I'm about money and business. So um, just like I, you know, just like I evaded the police there in Ghana when Velta Forbes sent them, you know what I'm saying? I'm just smarter than everybody else, unfortunately. It's what it is. You know, and that's what it takes to be a command operator. You have to think sharper than other people. I've studied here. This place right here, Bomani Technology, represents a place of studying. We study all of the great books. You know what I mean? This is our Black Power Bible right there, Black Corporative Economics right here. This is it right here. It is, uh, you know, we study books like this and we study the economics like this. So we know what we're doing. And like I mentioned to you, Yeah, race first. That's all we think about. Wicked people like uh, Lily Kay, uh, which she's a government worker. She's supposed to be Jamaican that lived in the UK. No, sorry, live in Canada. Uh, she's a government worker and she lives somewhere out there outside of Toronto. And um, she's, she, you know, she thinks that she's supposed to be, you know, this conscious sister and everything. But your consciousness is disruptive. You're trying to disrupt the greatest movement operation for our people, all because you have a tantrum of that you don't, you know, that, oh, Bomani is a dictator, Bomani is this. I'm running an operation with an iron fist. You know what I mean? I'm running an operation to get this stuff done. I'm tired of black people coming together, doing business, doing operation, and they don't get nothing done because they run their mouth, they talk stupidity and play games. I'm not about that. I'm about kicking ass, calling names and getting stuff done. That's like I called out, about all those wicked, devil, evil witches that's, that, that, you know, that, that's been very disturbing and then caused so many problems. And now they're all pissed off that they were removed and kicked out because they have to, be, have to have an executive operation to where I cannot let troublemakers and crazy people destroy our group. So you get rid of the weaklings so we could be strong. So right now we're our strongest. You know and I mean, and all them witches, we're going to burn them at the stake. Because that's what we do with witches. We hunt them down and burn them. You know, so all of them better stay out my path. Anyway, family, uh, let me just let my good brother, my good yard brother, and um, Jai, this is my brother, uh, also from our area in uh, Kingston. You, uh, uh, you Prince, brother Prince, I'm going to unmute you. Let's see if you can mute yourself, brother, so we can get your introduction and get you to share with us what's going on. What's going on, my brother? Yes, Bridget, we can hear you loud and clear. That was my mother and my sister, my blood yeah, mother and my blood sister. That's that's, yeah, our, yeah. that's our family from Jarrett Lane. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, man, I see. I, I, that's yeah. where, there we come from. Anyway, brother, yeah. introduce yourself. Tell us about where you're coming from. What's your vision as a technician and how me and you are going to come together to build houses for me and my rest of my family and other people. And we're going to work together to do some wonderful things in Ghana. Yes, my, yes, yes. My name is Yu Prince, a carpenter by, a carpenter, welder. I'm an all-arounder. You know, I, you know, you have some people said, uh, you know, sometimes they say you are, you know, they have a saying that, you know, if you are, you are master of, you know, you have a lot of trade, but you are not master of none. But a man that have more than one trade, is better, have more than one skill, is better than a man who only have one skill. Because he only can do one thing, but the other person can do several things. But beside that, uh, yes, I was born in uh, uh, Oliver Road, Top Oliver Road. So called uh, Warwick Hill. You know, uh, a feature in, uh, from Sanders Lane. And we, you know, uh, uh, Spanish Town, Spanish Town, Gerald Lane. All of them places was about the little place that we run up and down from uh, all over, from the, top of, from the bottom of Mountain View to the top of Mountain View. You know, that, that was our, our town, you know, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, and, and my goal is, as I say, cooperation, with, you know, with each other because fighting, or, fighting or won't get us anywhere, you know. And, uh, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm just really blown away by the, the whole situation that go down. But, you know, we still 
you know, go and work it out and come together strong. And, uh, you know, build a, a, a good community, you know, that we can take care of each other and take care of, you know, our brother and sister on the, on, on the continent as well, you know. So, so I'm looking forward and, you know, to meet some people, uh, you know, first and, and, and directly face to face, you know. So just keep on going on strong, my brothers and sisters, you know. One love. Yes, my brother. Appreciate your energy, man. I mean, mute you. All right, cool. That's my brother, you, Prince. And um, just going down to, I got my sister. All right, uh, Sean, I'm trying to unmute you, see if you can unmute yourself. And also, Sharon, trying to unmute you. Uh, see if you can unmute yourself, Sister Sharon. All right, family, we're just waiting for one of our two to unmute himself. All right, uh, Green Sharon, you're unmuted. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, hi, Bomani. How you doing? My sister, my sister, long time, long time. Um, we got we to gotta link up. Uh, let me know when next time you're available to meet. You know, we can meet over here. I can meet you where you are in uh, okay. your side of town. Yeah, a minute. Huh? Yeah, it's been a minute. I can do yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. I know it's like crazy, and you like you probably like, Bomani, what the hell is going on? The nigga peeing got you all over the network, <laughs> and then you just made a great escape, launching your son out the windows and jumping out the window and escaping from the police and everything. And they 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 have a they they hunt they have a manhunt going on for you. You probably hear about <laughs> stuff like that, right? Yeah, I've heard it all. I've heard it all. I've seen several videos. Yes, absolutely. What do you think about all this mess? And I'll just mute and they need us to share with us um, what's going on also with yourself, where you come from, what you're about me? and what you're looking to build. Let's not tell it all. You can hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Well, um, <laughs> I have learned how to be present, but not be present because, um, you know, all the, um, I will call drama. We all can be affected by it. We are all, um, no exception, but we are humans and we all have emotions. So we are going to be affected by it one way or another. And basically I'm learning to deal with it by be kind of um, a silent observer. I'm not a complete observer of it, but a silent. So, you know, I was um, involved with um, investing in property in Gambia. And I started seeing a lot of drama with the people, uh, the, um, the expats in uh, Gambia. And it weighed kind of heavy on your heart because I, my instincts tell me a few people were really good people, really just trying to start a new journey that I, there are truly are trailblazers like any other trailblazers in our history. And we are actually seeing it unfold. And I truly feel that they are. And maybe back in the day of, um, of Black Wall Street, they didn't have social media. <laughs> they didn't have a lot of cameras, but I can imagine in their struggle that they were the naysayers, they were the supporters. They were everyday people walk of life and the entrepreneurs and business people just um, trying to be part of something new and great. And we all know eventually uh, what happened to that. They tried to reestablish and it didn't actually succeed, but we all know, but they did succeed at finally getting established. So, which I find uh, will be in a very interesting study. The nights that they would have gave it to us in school as children and we were known about it. What the qualities that they have that allowed them to work together. That, because right now I don't see that. I see, um, unfortunately what I'm seeing in like in Gammy, I tell you the situation is, and I just say among black people period, is we've been trained that there is not enough. It's not enough. And so we're, as they say, the crabs in a bucket, scratching and scraping and tearing each other down, trying to get a, a piece. 
But in actuality, and the white man has proven about where they live, very great. I've been out in California recently, live very rich and opulent, that it is enough. It is enough to go around, but unfortunately, we didn't get that memo. And so we still working out of that slave mentality, uh, which is how you keep us, you know, which how the way in which you keep a slave down is to keep them fighting among themselves. And so um, for those who don't know me, um, I'm a nurse by trade. I'm unique in a sense that I didn't go to a regular school. I am part of the Nation of Islam. And so I started the Nation of Islam newborn and I went all the way to my high school years. And so I, I wouldn't say I'm Pan-African <laughs> as much as I was taught the world, the world was black. The world was melanated. And we are, you know, the chosen people of God. And uh, there, there is something great in us. And so, um, but even being part of that for, for many years, I went through different changes and process with that child, a, 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 you know, a teenager, or young adult to an older person. And I have come to see the same stuff among that group. It's like it's in every group. <laughs> so right now I'm like a silent partner and say, you know, God just showed me the way because this is too great. This is too big for me. This is something born out of something of hundreds of thousands of years. And there are gonna be some that will succeed and there are gonna be some that not. And to learn just how to be still with my heart and give it to God. Um, so personally, I believe Bomani, I believe Phil that you are one of the good guys. I get the same, um, the energy I get from you, like certain other people, a few people that I've seen um, and, it, and there are few. <laughs> <laughs> if there are more, they're just not on, on, on social media, but it, it's, there are very, very few. And I think um, one thing I do know for those who may not know, because I've been a homeowner for many, many years, multiple properties, um, uh, have had homes completely paid off. The one I'm in now is completely paid off. And, um, by, and I lived in different type of communities. I'm, by the way, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. So I, I lived in, um, I came down here with the big great movement, uh, 2001, when uh, uh, real estate was booming and they said there was black man's Mecca and all that, which was in reality a scam because <laughs> they know black people have money. We have money, we have power. And, um, and um, so I, I lived in HOAs, I lived in different type of areas. What I do know at this point in my life that community is the way, uh, absolutely the way, especially because of who we are and our backgrounds and our history. Community is the way. How we get to community, uh, it's, it's gonna take a lot of work, but of course you gotta start somewhere and I believe someone's going to do it. So why not Bomani? <laughs> someone's going to do it. And then I guess you start from there, you know, re-educating, reprogramming on, to for us to understand there is enough. So my, my mindset right now is uh, it is enough. It is enough. We don't have to be desperate, scratching, um, killing each other. And even my own family, you know, it's about 11 of us and we came from the same background and we scratch and they scratch too. <laughs> but I know that's a programming that teach us it's not enough. And, but it is, it's more than enough because guess what? whether you call God, whatever you call your God or the great divine, it's endless. It's endless. And the white man knew uh, that the riches is endless. It is endless. And we have to reprogram ourselves to know that. So I see all the crazy. Sometimes I want to pull you to the side, be your mommy, <laughs> because I know Negropenia. And um, I know Negropenia from the very beginning. I can call them out and um, and I'm hoping, but unfortunately everybody's not that bright, I guess, right? <laughs> that they can't see him, okay? See his hatred. And I've seen it from the very beginning. So he attacked a little old lady crossing the street. He do not care. And um, 
you did shut him down for a minute, I noticed. <laughs> so I'm not sure what got him started back. But um Yeah, um uh Sharon, if you can hear me. Um what got Negro PN started back was uh one of our members name is Delta Forbes. Delta Forbes is the one that called the police on me because she feel like I should give her a $3,500, which is non-refundable for her cancer and a bunch of plots. And that's um, how that got started. She called and reached out to Negro Pian and gave him everything, all kind of information and everything, leaked details out, confidential stuff. So it's a serious situation. Um, so, and then Negro Pian on there, twisting the situation what he was told and everything and and drumming up and then now people are giving me a nightmare it is that it is i'm just i've been i've never had to block so many people in my life and then people who are literally coming at me telling me that i shouldn't talk this way and i shouldn't do this and kind of talk to me like they know what what i'm going through and know what i'm dealing with i just like okay well i don't need to communicate with you block and things like that you know and it doesn't matter how long i've known them and things that i've been cleaning house this is a revolution. It's a war. Marcus Garvey organization was destroyed because of a piece of shit like nigga peeing and that trash hunchback crooked head face Delta Forbes, uh, who call herself a Jamaican, call myself at one point to say that me and one of my other brother, Jamaican brothers in there, that we're our Jamaican brothers. But she keep on trying to shake us down and keep on thinking she can just rough and just be disrespecting our organization. Just like if she was to do the same deal with an, any other organization, she would have to she would, she would lose more money. And it wouldn't be a situation where she can just go call the police on them and embarrass them. She did that because I'm a black man and makes talk, and talk about my papers, our credentials are dirty. When you come to my office, I even did a live video uh, and showing everybody all of my, my stuff in my office and all the certificates, but all that stuff is online. All that stuff is public knowledge and it could be it's public access. We we handle our business and stuff. So that's why I'm a vengeful person right now. And I'm cleaning house. Anybody's in collaboration with her, I'm wiping house. Our first, second vice president is gone. His punk ass trying to join a call. Like you know, like we want him around. And it's like, yo, once you betray me and betray what we're doing, we're done. So we're asking everybody to be to be, you know, to be committed to, you know the organization and leadership and things like that. And I respect the fact that you trust us with your investment. Let us do our job and make it work for you. And I'm going to make sure that everyone of us that live in that 15 acres, we're going to live in a, in a parrot, a fortified paradise. It is going to be a military operation set up, but it's only to protect us. And it's also, it's a setup to where we can do a high level of business. So Nigga Pian is jealous and hateful that I'm making progress and making moves and Velta Forbes just don't know. She don't know the wickedness that she's doing because at the end of the day, if, if she destroy me and I fall apart and I commit suicide or I lose my mind, oh. I fall apart. Then let me finish family. Don't, don't, let me just finish. And those things. And say that happens. It just destroys a whole entity of people. All the hotels, the business people, the companies we do business, they lose business. So what, and then what would she gain? $3,500? No, she wouldn't gain nothing. You know, she's, you know, so these people don't think, but I'm a strong man. They're dealing with a warrior class revolutionary. I crush sellouts and black devils. I eat them for, I eat them for breakfast. So Earn Nigga PN is on my target and I'm smoking them. I got videos like I've never done videos before where I'm too flipping the different titles of the video name. I'm flipping from, from Jamaican English to Spanglish to, you know, to Brooklyn English to, to speaking, you know, Ebonics to whatever. And I'm just dropping rhymes and everything and I'm dancing a mover. I got my Navy hat on. You know, I got my, I'm just like, and people are like, oh my God, he is lost it. He is on drugs and I'm just enjoying it. And I'm like, this is, you know, you, you're telling people like, this is real. I'm somebody that don't, that's not scared of any of these things. And I'm a person that will fight with people. So when I tell people that I'm going to get that wicked hunchback, crooked Velta for deported, I'm literally going to get her deported. I pay, I, 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 I my defense lawyer, my defense attorney is on a serious payroll and he's going to get paid. I don't care. I do all kind of business here. So money is always here that I have in for business purpose. No, not my own purpose, but business purpose to get job done because Africa for Africans is an entity that collects money for one different reason. We collect money to pay black people 
and put black people in business and build business with black people. That's the, that's the what I create me and my business partners who got together. That's what we created. They're not with me at, at this very moment because that's life. You know, uh, this is a rough business and you have to have, you know, you have to have a, a bulletproof soul and you have to have, you know, you have to just be ready for war. You got to have your combat fatigues on, you know, people going to be, sh- 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 you know, people going to be coming at you hard. So I tell people, if they're not ready for this, don't get into this game. I got my brother, Dinah Samir. I got uh, Goenham and I got, uh, what's my other brother? Um, uh, Go Black. You know, those are my brothers right there. And, I, you know, uh, and they've seen what I've done and they've connected and built their own entity and things based on, you know, things like, you know, I'm, a, I'm an encouraging brother. Uh, but it's like, you know, I'm ready for war and battle for all these people coming at us. But they're not, they don't have an entity. We, it's a, we have a whole command operation. When you see that community center, that business center, that I'm going to use white folks' money and other people's money because they, because I'm going to get them, I'm going to get some rep- reparations. I'm going to get, I'm going to work that stuff because I have all my business stuff organized. You would have never seen a businessman more organized with his numbers and accounts and, and banking and all this stuff and uh, legality and incorporation. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy because you know people underestimate you. They think that you're supposed to be just because you're a hood and you're roughneck. I am a hood and I'm a roughneck. I am where I am. You know, I can't just like grow up and come from where I come from and just people that's expected to be something else. Right, right. Yeah, so, well, so uh, go ahead, sister. Okay, I'm just said I'm glad to hear you support those other um um trailblazers because I like I said, I believe it's enough. It is enough for everybody that want to get out there. This is a new paradigm shift. It's a new movement. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen since I've been here live. Um, I have never seen a movement like this. Uh, I don't think nobody have. And it's really up to us. We don't, we're going to decide what, what, what they're going to say about us in the end. So I'm glad to hear you support them. And I, because it's enough, you know what I'm saying? It's enough to go around. Africa is, is uh, they said, I've never been there actually. But I've heard, I'm hearing that it's way bigger than the actual they put on the map. It is gr- it's grandiose. And so. You know. Yeah, Africa is big enough for all of us. The issue is nigga Pian wants to take my business. He feel like, he's like, you know, he even admitted, he's like, and this guy is very successful. I'm telling people I've been getting paid since I was 13 years old. I'm, a, I'm always making money. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, that's, it's been my life. I got into the military early age and made made good money at an early age and worked the system from there on in life. You know what I mean? It's what it is, an investment in this business. I made people sign cancellation and refund policies. That's very, very, very high in cancellation and cancellation laws. So I, I play to win and I don't ever lose. I created three businesses and they're all successful. I don't lose. I don't go out there and gamble to lose. And I gamble at a high value. I put everything up because I have faith in myself that I can provide divine intervention. You know, literally, this, literally just make it happen. So uh, nevertheless, man, uh, it's um, one of the situations where I'm expecting all these people to come. So my goal right now is to make an example of these two to the point where anyone else come, they'll check themselves because they know they're going to wreck themselves. Like nigga I literally, I'm literally working on the manhunt I gotta just work on my, my UK folks and we're gonna literally hunt them down like like a like an animal. And then when he get hunted down, he's just gonna get his ass beat up. And I'm hoping to get the nice, one of those folks to just put the footage up and share it. And I'm saying that as on, on a live real call that's gonna be uploaded public to YouTube. And I don't give a damn because I'm hoping that him or other people listen to it. And the next thing about Velta Forbes, she will be deported back to the UK. And and after my lawsuit with defamation comes to, she's going to sell our house in the UK and that money is coming to me. And I'm going to use that money to build what we need to build in the community. So all is fear and love and war. This is a revolution. I have no mercy. I take no prisoners. I'm here to crush and kill all weak opposition in front of me that stand in my path. We think they could come test me. And that's how I'm running it. The roughneck, rude boy. Jamaican coming out and mushing up competition. And I'm telling people, roll with me, my, my family, that's everybody sticking with me so far. And best, I'm going to do this for you and things like that. But understand, I got to be on my warrior path like I need to. And I don't need no one to stop me and get in my way. This is vengeance. This is the wrath of man. 
I'm coming for them and everyone else because we cannot let what happened to Garvey happen to us in this 21st century. This is the, our century, our evolution. And I'm gonna show people, I'm gonna flex our powers. You send police upon me, I'm a made man. We're gonna crush you. Anyways, just uh, finish up what you're saying and then I'm gonna get one or two more people and then we're gonna close out. Okay, and all I wanna say, as uh, far as Negropedia, it's no space for him. If Harriet, we would know how Harriet Tubman would have dealt with somebody like him. And um, I mean, he's gone too far. He is devil in black skin. And as far as I'm concerned, that was blatantly obvious. And I know you shut him down before. I remember you got quiet and hopefully somebody has shut him down permanently because he is really a hater. He went toward um, Danzel in distress. He has, he just went, he has no, he has no uh, boundaries and who we attack. And the bottom line is he, he, like you say, he's jealous hearted. He's hateful. He's spiteful. And he would do anything, no matter who goes over there and try to attempt to even do anything good for himself. He's coming out. He will come after you. And um, as far as uh, I think you said, uh, Ms. Ford, whatever the, the, the lady UK, that's unfortunate for her if she could not see who he is. I mean, cause she had to be, she's digging very low in the garbage <laughs> to uh, uh, join with him because he was blatantly obvious who he was from the very beginning. So nothing good could come from that. And um, so be it what happened as far as me, far as investing, when I first met you, cause you know, I said I invested before. This is my attitude. If you can't afford it, lose it. You know, if you, you got to really think when you invest cause I used to invest in stocks about, you got to really look and say, can I afford to lose it? Will I, can I recover? Will I be okay? Cause everything is Bitcoins and everything is taking a chance. So, so, I, I, I went in open and I'm still, you know, working on that. But my attitude is I'm okay if I don't get a penny back. And so you put that on record <laughs> because if I say I decide I don't want to uh, build there because I'm out of a certain age and maybe I want to do something else. I simply would say I'm investing in that into you, Bomani, because I do believe in your uh, cause and your movement. And like I said, community is the way. So unfortunately for those others, I wish they thought the same way. If they decide, it, if they let something poison them or contaminate them so easily, then there should be a loss. And if, as far as Black people, we should know our history. We should know that we are easily contaminated. <laughs> we are easily contaminated and tricked to turn back on our own kind. So I think it should be a price to pay. And I'm okay with that. Personally, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm okay. If you don't have the money to do this, you know, don't do it. If you're a certain age or you're young um, and you got time, you know, money, and you say, well, if, if it don't work out or I can't, if, I, if I'm not going to move in that direction, then you take the money as a blessing to Bomani and, and then move on with your life. And as far as her going to court here, uh, kind of on a, my hobby is I have done depositions. I have fought with some of the biggest lawyers in Atlanta, okay, <laughs> head to head, had them eating out my hand. She ain't got, she has no foot to stand on, especially right now in this COVID situation. You know, you can't even go into the courtroom and that might go off for another year or two or so. So I won't sweat it with her very much, whatever she called herself trying to do over here. And like you said, it sounded right when you said, hey, he's offering you land. He got land, it's available. You're not taking it, it is on you. And that's your loss. So with that, I ended <laughs> Bomani and um, I just keep on watching. Um, from the sideline. I'm not out there actually going to go out there and, and battle with y'all, but I'll write the books and keep the journals and um, spread whatever little gospel that my two cents I have. All right. Well, okay. appreciate you, sister. It's all good. Um, and definitely uh, next time, let's know, um, you know. Let me know when you're available. You and I will connect and, you know, we'll talk like we usually talk and connect and appreciate you and your daughter connecting and uh, being a part of that plot that uh, you know, we, we also need to talk about what kind of home you want to get built because we're trying to make sure that we get everybody all the legal paperwork, uh, survey and deed. Um, and then we, we're going to just make sure that everybody got builders and a building plan. That way the first 15 acres of what we're building is going to look real good and we can show people this is a replica. This is uh, a real, real operation of what we as a people can do when we put our money together and build black power and not talk about it and gossip and play games. So uh, let me know if, uh, if you have anything else to share or if you have any questions about anything. And I'll just get the next person, which is Russ Marvin. So 
Russ Marvin, be prepared to uh, unmute yourself, brother, please. Okay, good night. I appreciate you. I right, saw so family in line is open. Anyone have anything else to share? Go ahead and share it. I'm waiting for um, uh, Russ Marvin, but- uh, Here I am, here I am. Gre greetings, family, greetings, greetings. Greetings, uh, how are you feeling? I was on lock tonight, on lock it, didn't get to the Zoom and everything else. Good but, you, brother, how are you? Uh, doing great, brother Bamani. Yes, perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get right to the point. Uh, can you just share with everyone your journey as far as me and you connecting, and then also the journey of you traveling to Ghana with me, and the journey of me telling you about our land in Garvey Town, then that didn't work, and then this land, and now you see all the footage and the updates of what's going on, and then just tell people you know, how you know how everything looks, you know, because you and I build the UNIA uh, Division 421 from Atlanta, and we've worked together in an organization, and now we're taking that organization skill to this whole new level. Russ Marvin. Yes, family. I just want to let everybody know that Brother Bamani is the real deal, y'all. Brother Bamani is a righteous brother. And Brother Bamani, whatever he says, he's a man of his word. Because there's a lot of YouTubers out there that's talking about things, but whatever Brother Bamani talk about, he's showing it to you at the same time. And me and Brother Bamani go back a couple decades and I've always known Brother Bamani. He's a man of integrity. Yeah, from, he will never, brother, from 2007. He will, he will never try to get over on nobody. And whatever he wants, he pays for it. He don't come look for no favor from nobody. So I'm so glad to know Brother Bamani because there's not too much righteous people out there. But Brother Bamani is a righteous man. If you pay for the land, you have your land. And what I like so much about Brother Bamani is that the documentation, the paperwork is vital. He makes sure everybody gets their paperwork. He makes sure that this is about Pan-Africanism. This is about us as Africans returning to the motherland in a righteous way. So I, I'm so glad to have Brother Bamani as my longtime friend. Me and him started the UNIA Atlanta Division. We're one of the seven founders from back in 2009. And now Atlanta Division 421 is one of the strongest divisions in the UNIA. But I work close with Brother Bamani because he used to be our uh, financial secretary or accountant, and he kept our books and did our financial records, excellent. That during that time I was a president and he made sure whatever Brother Bamani does, he puts his full heart into it all. So from the UNIA to then Brother Bamani said, Rast, I've come to Africa and that was such a joyous time back in 2015. I joined African for the Africans on the journey of a lifetime to the motherland. And that was my first and only experience to the motherland. And that's why I have to give thanks to Brother Bomani because if it wasn't for Brother Bomani, that wouldn't be possible. So whatever Africa for the Africans doing, I supported 100%. I have my plot there and soon I will join everybody in building under the plot. So I'm down 100% with whatever Brother Bomani, his leadership, because it's a righteous leadership and it's the right leadership. It's about us as African people. And today, the amount of videos that I see that is on the YouTube channel for Africa for the Africans and how Brother Bomani is able to connect us in the diaspora back to the motherland there in Ghana. I don't know where Brother Bomani gets all the energy but he he does such great, tremendous works when it comes to repatriation. And I've said in my mind long, long time ago that Brother Bamani is Marcus because that's what Marcus wanted to do, take us, us who's ready and who's righteous to the motherland. That's what he's doing in our time. So we have to give thanks for that, you know, and give thanks for Brother Bamani and, uh, I believe 
and I have my confidence fully in Brother Bomani 100% in his leadership. This is Ras Marvin, part of Africa for the Africans, and I look forward in getting to work and stepping up in Africa for the Africans, taking greater responsibility to make sure the vision of repatriation, us going to the motherland, is solid and righteous. And when yep. I hear, hear the word Negro Pian, to me that reminds me of a Black European. It doesn't remind me of an African. But Brother Bomani, I was watching the videos and you asked them a very important question. You laid out what you're doing for Africa. And you asked him what is he doing for Africa? And what is his works? And he acted like he didn't hear you. He says, not my responsibility. Yeah, you know? So we have to go for those who are looking out for us as a people and we gotta look out for each other. I give thanks to be part of this unification part of the Black Star Pan-African community. And I'm gonna do my part wherever I'm needed, I'll be there. And I look forward to seeing everyone soon, whether if it's here in America or hopefully in Africa on the 15 acres. So far, whatever, back would never, and give thanks for Brother Bomani for enabling me for share tonight. Uh, Brother Rossman, I appreciate the energy, man. You know, you have to tell everybody about CBPM. <laughs> oh, yes. And then uh, tell everybody about uh, your background as an engineer and the things that we can do as uh, engineers, because my sister, you know, she, you know, the uh, you know, same thing, you know, into technology and engineer. And it's a you know, few of us. Uh, but, uh, you know, share those talents and those things and the vision that you have for us, including being one of those top-notch instructors at uh, Bomani Technology University. You know, we're going to turn our operation into a university. Um, exactly. And uh, you're one of our, our best math teacher. You're my sister. Okay, okay. Well, the Collective Black People Movement, y'all, mission is to gather, document, and organize our people's skills, talents, intelligence. Currently, we have 3,369 members, brothers and sisters from Georgia, the whole United States. And I think Hey, what's mommy still there? All right, you just mute yourself. All right, let's try this again. All right, uh, so let Russ Marvin work on what he's working on to fix. So, all right, uh, Russ Marvin, uh, can you stop back over? Uh, your your you were muted. You muted yourself. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what I was saying is that the Collective Black People Movement organization is an organization that currently has three thousand three hundred and sixty nine members. And our mission is to gather, document, and organize our people's skills, talents, intelligence. And we've been building with the CBPM from 1995 here in Atlanta. And uh, it's an organization that have brothers and sisters from all over Georgia, all over America, and 37 different countries we have membership from. So we continue to build. And Brother Bomani has been instrumental in the growth of the CBPM because he maintained our computers at the office and uh, all of our technical operations to the highest level so that that way the job we do with online gathering our people skills talents intelligence becomes smooth you know so in addition I'm an engineer mechanical engineer bachelor's of engineering in mechanical engineering from State University of New York at Stony Brook in 1987 and masters in industrial engineering. And I used to run a nuclear reactor in New York, Brookhaven National Laboratory. And uh, currently I've been teaching my high school mathematics and science for since 1999. And yes, we have to have our own education system when we reach in Africa. So I'll be working with the education department here, BS PAC, and uh, also to make sure that 
whatever assistance our youths need when it comes to math and science and the STEM curriculums and the STEM courses, I'll be there for them. Okay, and also I'm the, one of the inventors of the high flying rockets. We teach our youths how to take an object and bring it a thousand feet in the sky and then bring it back to the earth safely and teach them the calculus that's involved with calculating the height of the rocket flew or the launch velocity for the rocket and just making sure that our youths have hands-on experience like oh, we used to have back in the days when we were young with go-karts and kites and everything else. Uh, a lot of times, no, the only experience our youths have is the cell phone. So, but anyway, the high flying rockets is a big thing, you know, uh, Google search it, high flying rockets. You see, I'm the only black person building rockets on the first page of Google. And that knowledge I'm passing on to the youths and can't wait to take it to Africa. So those are some of the things I'm, I've been doing uh, for the past years and years here. What about Bamani? Yes, sir, brother. Yes, brother, Russ Marvin. Appreciate your energy. I appreciate your energy. And, um, you know, we've been working on this and talking about these things for a long time. And the day has come where we can actually move forward. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And um, we're just going to keep on climbing because this is one of those special years where, uh, like right now, my uh, Senegal and Gambia trip, that's canceled. So, that just frees up my time to work on what we need to work on because we're no longer taking just a few people to Africa. Well, we never do that anyway. But, uh, you know, this can't get enough people to come on certain trips. But uh, we're going to be working to just be there in Ghana longer in May and just really put this down to where we just get things going on phase two. So yes, Russ, Russ Marvin, um, anything else you want to share? Just want to share that the future is ours, African people. Whatever we vision, we can manifest. So let's keep this vision of repatriation, this vision of us being able to establish back in the mother continent alive. Let's build our community. Let's walk in righteousness. So give thanks. I look forward to working with everyone and meeting everyone. And I'm Ross Marvin, and feel free to reach out to me anytime. Brother Bamani has my number. And I just give thanks for being here and you'll see a lot more of me. Absolutely, and Ross Marvin is in the group page with all of us because he's a member of God's his land and everything. So, and, um, so yeah, family, uh, that's us. Um, that's some of our members, our board members, everyone uh, kind of chimed and introduced themselves. Uh, we have Dr. Leonora Austin as the last person. Uh, my sister, don't know if you're available to talk, but if you are, uh, if you can do the same as what everyone else have done, just share their introduction and their connection with what's going on and how they feel about the future with uh, BS back. Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you for allowing me to speak and for being the, um, the great leader that you are. And for those of you who are members of the board, congratulations. And I'm confident that you all uh, just placed here at the right time so that we can move forward. Now, regarding me, I've also have a background in IT, although um, right now, I'm working as a, um, a high school teacher. My PhD is in business administration, international business, but I also have seven other degrees, different degrees. And um, in regards to IT, mine was mainframes or supercomputers, as well as um, large systems, basically, and some of the other stuff too. But my goal is you know, to help out any way that I can to give to the next generation, to our children. I'm hoping that we do open schools, or open a school, you know, to um, educate and train 
not just our people, but people in the neighborhood too, the community that we are fortunate enough to be moving into. And I think I had um, sent you a message, uh, Bomani, because I was interested in a land that's near the beach so that I can open the school. But I would like to also teach, you know, people in the community, those who are interested in open businesses, you know, um, business skills so that they can hopefully grow their business, which is what I do with, with my, um, my high school students. But I am glad to be here. Um, I am a team player. I am a disabled veteran, army vet. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Austin, excellent, I uh, appreciate you. And uh, yes, we can uh, definitely talk and discuss uh, those things. Um, and um, we can just work many things out. Um, and trying to find out if you have any of your military friends that are maybe interested in doing some good work, some humanitarian work there in the community. And yes, I'm going to have all the land that you and Sahida uh, wants to do orphanage and the wonderful things that, you know, the beautiful mothers of our society wants to do because, you know, you know, you know, the importance of this, those foundations. So I want to be able to use my Africa for Africans nonprofit and other things to just give, give us a lot of times you're an African, you're doing social programs and you just don't get the funding and the resources you need. I don't want that to be with our situation. I want us to just have that taken care of. And also the money that all of the business people are making in the town that we have running, we're using some of those resources back to invest back into the whole operation. Uh, so I just, I feel like, you know, we have created something that's a win-win energy. And as far as about the beach, I'm, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I'm gonna be talking with the chief and the attorney and they're going to be working out, but that's literally, um, as I confirm with everyone, my goal is to find out every single aspect of what, what, the, what beachfront property that the chief has and literally find a way to mark that down from one end to the next, because one end to the next is going to be blocked off completely. And that's your ports, um, your, you know, your docks and everything, your docks and everything. Uh, so uh, those are some of the ideas that uh, I have. So, but I have to work the deal. I already, I already signed my life away from phase two. The same phase two that I'm getting the hunted done done for. But uh, you have to make the deal now. So, as um, I've got the buzz in his ears, I, and so I just got to do that work because what I have to think about is we have to think about the future. Is like you can't make those deals later on because the land, the property is gone. Uh, other people are coming to invest in it. So. So uh, that is a uh, nice super plan. And if anybody who have ever been to Negro Jamaica, that's what that the theme is going to be based on or, or Brazil, you're getting that feel of, the, I don't know how we're going to make the beach look like that, but I'm sure we can clean it and work ways mm -hmm. to make it look pristine. And, and then this, the, 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 you know, you have your uh, boat activities. Like what I like about Zanzibar Island, you have, you know, we have beach activities that we do sunset cruise but there when we go to Ghana we're limited on those things because it's not really a beach set up town where you know where you have those kind of activities going so it's an untapped resource it's an untapped investment and then for people who want to just get away from that crazy stuff in Accra which you know you spend some time out there where we are for a few days and you're good uh, so those are some of the things I want to be talking about a lot more but I got to do my preliminary work and you know, and get things going. It's easy to get things going now because we have a designated chief that we're working with, a designated attorney, consultant, and, a, and surveyor. Those are the team that you need to get things done in the country. If you don't have a tight niche, a connection with them, a lot of things go wrong. So the only reason why a lot of things has gone wrong is because we built the foundation of relationship. And I made sure, one thing I made sure, I'm dead serious family, I made sure everybody got paid a lot of money. When money was coming in, you know what I mean? I wasn't like, oh my God, let me just go take, take the money to go buy a new car or something. It's like, you just pay them, get the attorneys their money. Get These are some of the best people in the country. Pay them their money, do something special for them that other people have not done. Can do the right deals, make sure they get taken care of. 
If they need anything, you get it from, they call me, say, bring me a cell phone, bring this. I bring it, they, they ask to do this, bring, you know, whatever the situation is, you know, you just take care of it. So I'm letting everybody know that family, we have a good energy going with everything. So let's just keep it strong. Yeah. I was, okay, and, I have a question, Bamani. Uh, um, in regards to getting, um, not well, citizenship, the road towards uh, uh, residency. Yes, residency. You have to stay there at least um, six months, correct? Uh, no, you, can, you just have to be there for about uh, 30 days. So the goal is to, once you get there, we'll get our, mm -hmm. uh, our business partner, Duncan, to, to get your passport and take it to, or go with you to immigration and drop it off at immigration. And um, this, and then they would already have the money already to pay for everything. And so then you just bring two passport photos, like of the update photos. And then you have, uh, you know, they already have the application because you would have filled it up from what I've sent. And, um, and what I've sent them, what you sent them ahead of time, they're going to work on it. So it makes it a lot easier to get it out process. And uh, that is my new way of getting it done. And uh, right now we're just trying to get, you know, get people to just start thinking about it. And we're going to get the first batch out, uh, hopefully by uh, sometime next month. Okay, because I haven't paid yet. So I think I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, that's our process. I think it's a thousand. It and fill everything out. It's yeah, because it's a thousand dollars, right? To do uh, that? Uh, yes, it's a thousand dollars. So we just usually tell everyone to pay to pay a deposit of 500 and then pay the balance. Um, okay. at least, you know, pay the balance at least if nothing else a month before you get there and all those things will be worked out. Okay, okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, I appreciate you um, and I appreciate you and other people weathering the storm because it is a storm. It's yeah, open. it could be expected. Once you start growing and you're doing the right thing, stuff like that happens and you just have to be able to fight it. <laughs> yes. what you're doing. I'm a fighter. So they don't get in the ring with the wrong person. And I was like, yes. get in the ring with Mike Tyson. <laughs> be careful because he's going to knock you out. <laughs> mm-hmm. And <laughs> that's funny, right? <laughs> oh, man. But I'm having fun also. I'm being honest with everybody. I'm having fun. It's the best time of my life. Life is just great. I mean, um, it, it's, you know, everything. It's like, it's like when, when you're not, when, when it's like, when, when you have all of these odds against you all your life, it's, and then you're here, you just got to be happy and thankful at the age of 44. And you've seen so much of your other comrades just, you know, just end up in dead end jobs and dead end careers and six baby mamas and drama and things like that. And I got, well, I got a little, you know, I got my, well, my, my, you know, I got that chaos right now. Um, as I, as I'm trying to wait for my little boy and his, um, wait for his mother to drop him off. Um, and there, then there I got all these crazy texts and everything. I, it's like unbelievable. I'm like, yo, this y'all supposed to just hang out for a few hours while I do this conference call and you know, I really just put my energy into things. But it's uh it's it's what it is, you know, it comes with the turf of life and things like that. You know, just like, you know, I never thought I'll be this, you know, a single father where you know you just you have to drag around a child from you know, from his early months of years to your your job sites and now taking them all the countries that we travel to and everything. And you know, and, and it's 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 a good life because you just you're empowering a younger generation at an early age, and you just, you know, showing people that we could be socially responsible, even in hard times and rough situations where you just a dealt a fair, a, a, an unfair card, you know. And um, I just appreciate this uh, the opportunity of just being born in Jamaica, growing up in Brooklyn, and then being able to join, you know, the Navy, which at that point. It was just a lot of white men there. Just it was just reserved for them. But um, you know, I earned my keep, earned my keeps, and I was able to build me an aviation career. You know, aviation is impressive, and come out here, just getting a job working at airlines, and then you just out here, you know, your brothers and homies talking about black power and, and all this other stuff, and you're like, that sounds good, man. Let me just get in, you know, get involved and 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 make a difference and see if I can just be a difference maker. But Never, never, never did I thought that I would be in this direction and position. But uh, sometimes you just, you're, you know, you're chosen to do these things beyond what you're, you think you are, and you just gotta live the life. So I'm enjoying it and just enjoying a good life that comes with it because it comes with a whole lot of perks. 
and uh and things like that so more money more problems all good um we are gonna make this too so um and every time these things have happened to me in the past especially like with garvey town people people say that you know i've been finished on many occasions that's what they you know my naysayers and and devils say they say that um uh, Bomani is finished, you know, um, he's, there's no comeback from the situation. He has ruined his business. You now, and one thing I love about it, everything is, um, especially everybody in this group currently, since we've gotten rid of all of the black devils, um, it's just the, the level of commitment and dedication as far as how we have worked together to get everything done and still stand against all our odds. It's been amazing. We've been resilient as a group. Um, and once again, family, we are still 50 strong. 50 strong, building a strong Black nation and everything. So appreciate everybody, energy and everything. So what I'm going to do is open up for general discussion. So anyone, you can just unmute yourself and speak freely if you have any questions about anything, anything you want to discuss or talk about. All right, um, line is open. Yes, Bamani, this is Charles. Prince Charles, Charles. rock on with your bad self, brethren. Hey, brother. Um, well, this is basically to everybody's on the chat. Um, I'm running a GoFundMe to help save a school in um, East Ligon Hills. It's about to be closed down, but um, if we can get some money organized, it won't have to be that way. Um, the lady basically, uh, she's a doctor, Dr. Amy Kuebor. She's running a school down there and uh, basically um, her landlady wants to take away the school from her because she was renting it. And uh, basically the landlady is then turned around and say, well, I want the school back. And she's only given her until November to move. Luckily, Dr. Amy has managed to find a new location. She's making payments on it, but then there's a lot of renovation to do on the building that's on the school. So she has until November to move and basically it will really, really be bad if she loses the school because all these kids, some of them don't have parents, so they will go back into care. Uh, so that's what I'm really trying to help to prevent. So, you know, if you guys can find it in your heart brother, to, go ahead. to give whatever you can to help save it. Can you not hear me, Bamani? Uh, Charles, we can't hear you. Go ahead. Uh oh, you can't hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Maybe you might have to unmute, unmute me or something. Hello? I heard you, Prince Charles. I think something might be oh, wrong with Yes, uh -oh. I heard the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's great. Uh, at least, yeah. So I posted the link in the in the chat. You okay. know, so if anybody can, you know, donate whatever they can, even if it's a dollar, it would be muchly appreciated. You know, because I've noticed, like, you know, we have to help our own people. We're not going to get any help from anybody else except our own. So, true. you know, we're, if we depend on others to donate, they come with a narrative, you know. So this is a wholly owned Black school. You know, the lady is a doctor, just like yourself, you know, Dr. Austin. And um, she runs a school. It, it, she doesn't really make any money doing it. She's just trying to provide a service. A lot of the, the kids, you know, are don't even pay tuition because they don't have any parents. So, wow. yeah, wow. it's just that bad. It really is. You know, um, some of the kids, like when the school is on break, they go back to foster parents. And as you know, when you're in foster care, you're not placed there indefinitely. You could be removed from that family for whatever reason. So, you know, Dr. Amy um, tries to do her best as possible, but some parents do pay school fees, but it's just not really enough. You know how it is. If you've ever been to, to Africa, mm -hmm. it's always a lack of funding there. It's always mm -hmm. the order of the day, you know. So I, I, I started the GoFundMe because the doctor was actually going to leave the school to come to the West to get a job. You know, and I told her, like, you got to be careful. If you come here, you could get stuck here or you could end up losing the school completely. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, I will start a GoFundMe to assist. And uh, that's what I've done. I, I put the, I actually donated first because if I'm going to be asking you guys for donations, I have to lead by design. 
I can't be asking people for money and don't donate myself. So I did donate. So, you know, I'm, I'm really, really passionate about this. I've actually never, ever done any of this type of thing before. And I just feel like, you know, I want to try to do some good because when I was in Ghana back in December of 2020, I met a lot of people who were less fortunate than myself. And it really touched my heart. I tried to do as much as I could for them out there, but this is um, something for the children now. So, you know, I'm just hoping as many people can can assist, basically. Thank okay, you. now, where's the link again? I put it in the chat, in the BS Pack chat. Uh, excellent. Oh, okay. That sounds okay. good. That sounds good. Yeah. Good move. Let's uh, yeah, I, give us the... I put, it in, I put it in the chat. Um, even if you can't donate, share the link. I, I really would appreciate it. Even if you can't donate, just just oh just yeah, like, see, but it looks good, man. Our family yeah. is right there, so anybody can click on it and check it out. Good yeah. move, brother. Yeah. Good way to look out for your sister. Yeah, yeah. We have to take care. That's what I was telling Dr. Austin. We've got to take care of our own. Nobody's gonna come. We have no friends in this world. We have we just have our own people. And it seems like some of our own people want to take us down with the white devils, you know. So and, you know, further to what you were saying about that, that cripple old ass belter, I had a lot of issues with her, too, because I, I had a, you know. Hey, brother, for real? You had serious issues with her? Yeah, so, I had issues just, with her, too, as well. going to bring this up, what I'm asking you to do is just tell us in detail. Your mic is yours. Well, well, let me go from the beginning. Bamani introduced me to her that she was a medical professional. So Bamani... Um, told me that, you know, I could take some kind of counseling from her and everything. And she wasn't really doing anything really for me, just a lot of talk and, you know, um, so, you know, we kind of became friends. And um, after the tour had ended, we ended up renting an Airbnb together. And uh, I went to see, um, I went to see a hospital with her. She, she told me she wanted me to come along with her. She took me to some really, really posh hospital in Accra. So I went with her and everything. And um, afterwards, I went to a medical facility and I told her about it. She said she wanted to come. Then um, within about a week or two into the Airbnb, she started to demand money from me. I said, what are you asking me for money for? She said, well, I, it's for services rendered. I said, what kind of services are you talking about, lady? She said, well, I came to the medical facility with you twice, so I think you owe me some money. So what I did to get her off my back, I initially said, yeah, whatever, man, I, I'll give you $200. But look, I only said that because the lady started to freak out in Ghana. Like, she started to stamp her foot you know, um, every minute and she was trying to undermine me. I was the one trying to help Belta like with all the logistics for her to get around. She didn't have a clue how to use the Uber or the boat. I, I was the one paying for all the transportation. It was always a problem to get money from her. And I would um, arrange for rides. We would go to the ride and she was supposed to pay me back half the money. A lot of the time she didn't want to pay. So after the Airbnb expired, I went my way, she went her way. She even went as far as to even try to get me to um, come to the airport with her the day when she was going back. And I remember when she had moved to the Micklin Hotel, because she went to the Micklin Hotel just a few days before she had gone back to Accra. Maybe about a, yeah, she went to the Micklin Hotel about a week before she flew back to, uh, to Canada. And she had said to me, you know, Charles, um, when I go to the Micklin Hotel, I don't want you to tell Bamani that I'm there. I said, why not? She didn't want to say. She didn't want to say the reason why. So I actually picked up the phone and told Bamani immediately. I, I said, like, is there some kind of problem with you and Delta? And um, Bamani was saying, no, not as far as I know, because she's telling me, like, I'm not to tell you where she is. And I thought everything was good as far as you and her were concerned. And it's like, um, while I um, moved out and I was in a place called Wesley Gone, she started to call me and harass me, asking me for $200. She said she was going to send some guys to shake me down for $200. So I said, well, you know, 
this is where I am, you can send them. And then um, she started to say that I should come to the Micklin Hotel and leave the money there. Like every single day it was a different message and harassment. So I just blocked her and on a, on a WhatsApp and I blocked her on my email because she started to harass me and she said a whole lot of negative stuff. So I think this lady's a little bit mentally ill in the head, to be honest with you. You know, I, I think she's really crazy. I think her issue was, is that she came into Ghana and she kind of got, um, she kind of, you know, spent more than she had, basically. I think she's kind of in over her head. That's what I really think. Um, she told me she had recently bought a new house in Canada. I don't know how true that is or, or what, but she bought land from Bamani and I would have thought we're like, you know, if you want to get your foot wet, why don't you just, I bought one plot, but you went up there and bought four plots. So I think she's kind of in over her head and, you know, she's in Ghana. She's not really earning any money out there. And uh, she would have been better off if she had just stayed in Canada rather than trying to live in Ghana when you don't have an income out there. I think that's what's basically her issue is she doesn't have money and she's trying to shake people down. It's a legitimate contract she signed with Bamani. And what she did to Bamani is disgraceful. It was nothing more than a, a weak, cowardly, spineless ambush. It's an ambush. Those police officers, had they had any sense, they never should have even attended the hotel. Furthermore, they didn't have a warrant, and it's a civil issue. If she has a problem with Bamani, she doesn't need to ambush him, and she knew he was in Ghana for the whole nearly 10 days or so. All she had to do, she could have accosted him when he had the seminar. She didn't do that. She waited until the day he was leaving, which we call, where I come from, an ambush. If I was there, I would have done the same thing. I would have snuck out of the hotel. I wouldn't have wasted no time because, you know, if you miss your international flight and it's not the airline's fault, the, you may have to pay to rebook. You may have to pay to rebook and that's not going to be cheap at the last minute. So I would have done the same thing. So based on that, I support Bamani in doing everything possible to have that devil, that hunchback Canadian devil deported. It's lucky it wasn't me, because I probably would have went about it a different way. But if it's deportation, I, I'm in favor of that. But it was nothing more than a cowardly, spineless ambush. And all these old uh, wicked mammies are trying to uh, gang up on Bamani. I even had that other Canadian spy, half-breed devil called Lily Kay. She, she WhatsApped me about a month or two ago telling me that Bamani has cheated people and all kinds of stupid things, you know? All kinds of nonsense. Uh, who the hell is Bamani? Bamani. Yes, brother, yes, brother. Who is that the Flash? Esther Flash is one of our sisters as a part of the group. So greetings, Esther. You can join the call and also um, is she going to unmute because herself? Because she got a question here regarding refunds. It seems she might be confused mm -hmm. about something. What she want a refund for? Well, she's, well, you want to, if you go to the chat, you'll see this question she's posted. Yeah, in I, I really need to unmute herself and, and ask a question. And yeah, because if what happened not, to the first if, agreement if that, that they could get back 2000? <clears throat> if we're on yeah, a conference, yeah, I, I got you, I got you. So, so family, the refund policy is based on what you signed. Some of the old policies, you only get you only lose 500, but you only paid a little bit of money. Some, some you lose a thousand, some you lose 1500. Right now, you lose 1500 out of the 3000. And then uh, you lose the 500 for the uh, deposit. So you lose basically 2,000 out of the 3,500. So that's what you lose now. But for whatever you sign then is what the policy is. And also, you know, like I mentioned, people in the past have paid a lot less money. So um, yeah, so that's a question. But um, other than that, you know, and then if anybody wants a refund or anything, all they have to do is email us directly. And that way, you know, because we don't want no one to be a part of this project. They don't want to be a part of the project. 
because we don't want no one that's not really feeling the project to be in the project. So we have a refund policy. So yes, the refund policy is still in effect. Uh, we, the no refund you see me in a video on is to basically let people know that the people like Velta Forbes who got we refund them all the money except for the non-refundable you can't get no more money after that if you want anything we can get you land and then you can use that land and sell it that's what the best we have for them everyone else whatever the policy is but we will commit to it and we'll give you the money but it's not going to be something where we give you the money all at one time you're working out on a payment plan but all you have to do is send an email and you get something back and right and i'm good for that i'm about that business and that life because i knew when we were doing this that you know we're j joking about it but I was, I was saying that I was like saying that 75 percent of the people are not going to make it and they say that and I was like they were, we were laughing I was like yeah I'm laughing because I know my people I know our black people are we give up we quit we see obstacles right now I got the world against me which is fine and it's been against me since Garvey Town so we came in when it was against me at Garvey Town and now we're here when it's against me and what we're doing and I have a whole team of people that's supporting us I talk about corporate lawyer, defense attorney, all that stuff. I have good people that we have set up to do this business. You have to be a bull in this operation. You have to fight because people will come at you. I'm a person that's been very successful at a young age. I've done well for myself. And I'm a person that pissed people off, you know, because I got balls of steel. I'm a black man with big nuts. And then, you know, in an in a age of soft, weak, punk, pussified, sissified men, you know what I'm saying? We, you know, we just don't have any balls. And things like that so it's what it is like some of the women that come at me they're, they're, they're between their husband their boyfriends and their sons those are the weak men they're used to dealing with and when they come up against the money they're like oh you don't shift budge bold nothing that's because you tell me about something and tell me to do something or tell me you know uh, how to run things basically what they usually try to do and i don't like you know i'm like you know i i i select what i do you know there's certain things i can do and i can't do but i'm not gonna just make nobody run me so that's who I am. So, um, you know, anybody want a refund? It's the refund still there. We'll, we'll sell you, you know, we'll work it out. And when you look at a new plot list, I always have, I, right now I got every single plot. Uh, hold on. Charles, uh, go ahead. Uh, your line is still open. But yeah, I got all, all the plots sold. So anybody else want to release their plots? Hey, I'm welcoming it. I'll make sure you get your refund back. And um, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get two people or three people or whoever on those plots. So don't, uh, so, um, you know, the best thing to do is just to post it in, you know, just, to, you know, send me an email or just be available to talk so we can talk because I'm not really clear on that message. It's, it's very, um, it's, it's not really clear on who sent it and how it was sent, but I'm just speaking in general about refunds and things like that. Um, so. Uh, but, ne but nevertheless, like I've mentioned, also, anybody who commit treason, sell intel, or try to sabotage us, they lose everything. Anything that they have in the books and everything will be, will be wiped wipe clean and, and be uh, sent over to Black Star community for us to take care of certain things, especially to keep feeding the defense attorney because he's going to need that money because when they're ready to come at us, he's going to shut them down. Uh, so that's how we work in family, Street, straight up roughneck, rude boy. And we're just gonna make it happen. And um, either family, you have your loyalty to what we're building, or you don't. And if you don't, the best thing to do is exit. Um, anyway, our brother, continue, our brother Charles. Yeah, well, basically, really, right? People like myself, people like Azebo, and you know, um, the people who you have appointed, Vice President, Secretary, Signing Officer. We have to be your bodyguards because. We can't afford to let what happened to Garvey happen to you because I can clearly see these fools, these devils are trying to do the same thing. They're trying to sink the ship before it's even sailed properly. That's probably what they're trying to do. And I, I would even anticipate more attacks will even come. As far as Negro Pian is concerned, he's neither here nor there. That guy is a broke bum. He doesn't have a job. He's on YouTubes for clicks. For, for donations. He's nothing. He's trash. You understand? He can't do anything. As far as you're concerned, he gives you free publicity. <laughs> so he's not a threat to you either way. And I even believe that none of these people who are disgruntled, 
people are probably broke because some of the people who left, they even did videos to say they don't have any money anymore. So maybe they uh, didn't plan out their strategy before moving to Ghana. You know, Ghana is not a cheap place to live. You have to really have an income, uh, a passive income coming in to survive there because, you know, there is no, um, uh, what you call it now, there's no charity out there. There's no, um, there's no um, welfare in Ghana. So if you're broke, you know, you may have to go to the U.S. consulate and ask them to fly you home. You know, so uh, people need to go out there with a plan, you know. That's one thing that um, that uh, I've come to realize. And as far as that hunchback devil, Belta, she panicked. She panicked and fled from Canada with no strategy of how she would be able to survive. All she was going around before was just posting about COVID and what they're going to do and about JFK and, and all kinds of nonsense, just mentally ill behavior. So they panicked and they fled without a plan. So, you know, it's, she doesn't have money. It's the best thing for her is to go to the Canadian consulate and ask for a free ticket to go back to Canada. That's the best thing for her to do, you know, because it's, it, it's money that she doesn't have. And she tried to shake me down for money. And then when she clearly see I wasn't going to give her any money, and I never disrespected this lady or argued with her but i just didn't like her style you know she started to harass me for money at all hours of the day and night so now because she comes to realize that we never had an arrangement or any agreement for me to pay her any money she kind of gave up and now she's trying to pursue bamani and i don't think bamani i don't think she'll ever try to sue you because it will cost her more to sue you than what she claims you owe her. So, you know, uh, I think someone just nearly, really, really needs to whisper some common sense to her. And that's it, you know? So um, I actually pity these fools, to be honest with you. I really, really do. You know, you're trying to do a good thing. You're trying to help your people. These people are so ungrateful and evil. You know, I really appreciate at meeting you and you taking me to Ghana. I got there and I got back in one piece. Not a scratch happened to me. Nothing happened to me. I learned a lot in the four months that I got there. Some of these people, they never, ever would have went to Ghana or even gone to the continent of Africa if it wasn't for you. And this is how they repay you back. You know, this is how they pay you back. And with this kind of colonized uh, 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 slave mindset that they have, these individuals will not last long in Ghana at all with that type of mentality, you know, uh, running their mouths and acting like they're on drugs or something. They won't last long in Ghana. It's a totally different type of uh, country compared to United States. It's not a country where you could just call the police and they just come and do your bidding for you. No, it's not. I wouldn't even, I, I even am suspicious to even thinking that where those police Really, even police officers? Did they show you IDs, my brother? <laughs> Did they show you their ID badges, my brother? Did they? I wouldn't be surprised. They might not have even been real police officers. You ever thought about that, my brother? Um, not really. Uh, but one thing I do know is that they were, you know, that they were just more so on in it for the money that she paid them. Thank you. They might have not have been Jenny Wine police because a friend of mine. Think about think about what uh, Barrister Charles mentioned. Barrister Charles mentioned that the people that she brought down to his office, the security guys, mm. the family, the person that we're talking about is Mimi Velta Forbes. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm we're talking sure. about. Um, she's a she was a former member, um, and she was on. Uh, you know, plot six, uh, but now she's on nothing. But any, anyway, um, uh, brother, yeah, that's uh, that's it, brother. So uh, she's trying to do the same thing to Barrister Charles, talking about trying to shake him down because he's saying that he's taking too long with her residency. So it's like, this woman understand, just because things take a long time and things are in process, don't mean you can just manhandle things and break it and make your own rules. There's rules to business. I'm a business administrator. And you have to go by how you run business and administration. You can't just do what you want to do. And that's why I've survived long in business because I follow the rules. And I don't yep. let people like that. I don't let people like that 
try to muscle me. You know what I mean? I don't get extorted. I extort people. <laughs> Brother, you don't need to extort anybody. Your business is all above board. You know what I'm saying? You don't I mean, need to I'm, saying, anybody. I'm not saying that we know we're the ones who be the ex doing extorting, not no one extorting us. So that play is dead. Uh, I can't wait to see when we get her deported from the country and when I ask get back to Canada. And, and then that she would be a luxury if she gets deported. Worse okay. can happen to her out there. It would be a it would be a luxury for her if she's deported. It would be a favor. She better what be careful because she's in Cape Town, Cape Coast. You know, somebody may see her, don't like her, and slap the shit out of her. Yeah. A lot of accidents like, happen in Cape Coast. Hey, brother, she may get hit by a bus. But worse, a lot of accidents happen. Didn't what's his name die in Cape Coast? What's his oh, yeah. name? Many Go people that I know. Cape many people. Cape Long list. What's his name? Uh, Enobi. Enobi, yeah. They said he died from malaria. Enobi didn't die from no malaria. Come to find out, it was over land. Did you hear about it? No, tell me about it, brother. Land. brother. Break it down and how did they do? Did they post? No, I heard. I well, listen, go back to Africa, interviewed him back in 2020, right? No, it could have yeah, even been, yeah, it was 2020. Yeah, 20. It was 2020 before I came on the tour with you. And Inobi was saying about how we got like a 99 year lease. You know, it's not that easy to get a 99 year lease now, right? You know, it's not that easy to get that. It's very difficult to get a 99 year lease. You have to really have a special hookup to get. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's difficult. It seems like other Ghanaians, it didn't sit well with them because some Ghanaians can't even get a 99 year lease, much less. So I think it, it, it's out of jealousy and I think they, they, they took him out. Just like how the African-American sister was, was murdered down in the Volta region, right? It was all over land. It's the, one of the easiest way for you to lose your life. It's over land disputes, see? So when you're new in a country and people know you're a foreigner, you really have to be careful because you're in a country where, you know, the culture is totally different from what you're accustomed to. And you may have things that they don't have. And that can, you know, stir up a little bit of jealousy. You know, so one has to be really, really careful. So at least when I was there, I didn't really talk too much. I did a lot of listening. So, you know, and I had I had people around me, good people around me all the time. But as far as like the devil, Delta, she's always running her mouth. I always get calls. People always call me and complain about that lady. Seriously. A lot of people don't like her. You know, and she's just going to have to uh, learn to chill because she's going to rub up somebody the wrong way in Ghana, and that's just going to be the end of her. So it might be the best thing for her all around for her to go get deported, you know. So at least she'd be safe back in, uh, in Canada's. But that's oh, basically oh, what I wanted to, kind of, perfect, to, 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 to really say. That's but different. we got your back, though, man. We got your back, though. You know, don't worry about it. We got your back. Ain't nobody going to take you down. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody going to take you down. Absolutely. I got this all worked out. You know, you know, I'm playing Battleship, you know. I, and she, yeah. We're in the 21st century the now. We, we learn by mistakes. I mean, not, we learn I'm by not, I'm design. Not, I'm not, no, you know, a guy with a PhD. You know, you're talking about a military tactician. We study yeah. warfare when you're in the Navy. Military yeah. warfare. Yeah. Well, the one thing I got to tell people, after 1942... It woke the fucking U.S. Navy up, literally. It woke them up. You know what I mean? You know, it, it, they never thought that people like 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 the damn Japanese with balls of steels would do this. You know, would just do would just gamble, and that's mm. exactly what they did. They gamble. They hit them hard, mm. but they didn't hit they they didn't hit the carriers. They didn't hit the the prized possession of a of the U.S. Navy, the aircraft yeah. carrier, and then the the yeah. warfare that was unleashed on them. Was on was was brutal from you know sinking all these ships to just yeah. wiping them out to so even where the, these group of samurai, you know uh, descendants that uh, well some of them are uh, they literally would not stop so they had to get bombed. So that's what that's what Velta is. Velta is the Japanese attacking the mightiest navy that's gonna unleash its power, the sleeping giant. That's what it is. So people are gonna see someone like her that's good, and even Shelly Belly. That's another person. That's another. 
Shelly yeah, Matthews. Shelly Belly. Trash. She who, says that she's going to sue you. Who literally, sue I gave her all of her money, money back. But I gave her all of her money back. <laughs> minus, <laughs> minus the survey. So family, you know, I even have people who have even given them all their money back and have issues. You know, and, and it's like, we're trying to do after, huh? people are being just animals. This is not a bank. You know what I'm saying? I'm a smart businessman, but I'm not a damn bank. <laughs> Bro, how can you sue someone for a service? The, sur the, the money she wants back is a surveyor. She's going to have to sue the surveyor. That's what I've told people. I was like, you want to sell him money, go, uh, go talk to the survey and see if he'll give you a refund on his work. Yeah. Look, he's already, he, he provided a service and he gave her the service. So what kind of money is she talking about? That's what I'm saying. These people, these people are animals. It's just, it's just like Barbara. Barbara talk about all this other stuff. I'm like, Barbara, you, you crooked, cockeyed, retard. You literally, literally going to try to get a refund back. I'm like, Barbara, we talk about phase two. I got emails where you saying, Bowman, I want to go on phase two because me and Wally, uh, are that then our former, you know, former lover for his life. I mean, I'm starting to think that he may have a crooked eye because <laughs> to get with something like that is, I mean, you have to really be blind. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the situation with that is like, you know, she made plans on that. And it's like, now she coming at me and I found a gangster in me because they want a refund. They want me to give them all this money back. And I'm like, Barbara, first, I told you, if you're going to get some of this money back, it's going to take months. I got other people I need to close on a refund. It's not, when I'm, my goal is to send money to the chief. So I, I can't just like be holding money and keep giving people money back. It's, it delays our payment with the chief. It delays us getting access to phase three and all that. So when, right now, the people who, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, brother Charles, I'll continue while I, I, I attend to something else. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I think I, I think a lot of our people just don't really understand business transactions, to be honest with you, because if you buy a house from, you know, from someone and you go to the bank, secure a loan against the house, and, you know, after about six months or a year, you decide you don't want your house, you don't ask the bank back for your money. You have to sell the house to get back your money, as far as I know. And if anything, the, the house would have appraised in value and you probably will make something on top. Well, it's easy, really, because like if I didn't want my plot of land tomorrow, or I, I would I would just tell Bamani, look, my, my plans have changed and I think I'm going to sell my plot and uh, keep it moving. I don't have to ask Bamani for anything. You just sell your plot. That's it. I don't know. It's not even really rocket science. Just, just sell your plot. You know, because as Bam Bamani said, he doesn't have any money to give anybody. All he has is land. So if you don't want this land anymore, sell it. That's all you have to do. Market it. Find an agent. You can find an agent and he'll be a reality and he'll market your, your, your plot and sell it for you. Minus his fees. It's pretty easy. So, you know, but I think that's the issue with our people. A lot of us just don't real read agreements and uh, just don't have any respect for that, for our own kind. You know, have respect for your own people, man. Other races respect themselves. So we need to respect our own, our own race and we need to read. This is how they've always tricked us because we don't read enough. Read and understand your contract so you don't sign to something that you will have regrets later. And I think that's one of the issues that some of these disgruntled ladies are having to, to deal with now. They sign off on contracts that they probably didn't read or they got in over their head and they just can't afford to continue. Is, is uh, Baba Zebo still around or is he going to sleep? Barbara Zebo, you still around, brother? She's probably going to sleep. Dr. Austin.
I'm here. Dr. Austin, what are you looking to come to Ghana, my dear? Um, I was supposed to have gone in December, but I tested positive for the coronavirus. Oh, no. So I couldn't go. So I'm going this December. I would like to go in May, but the school doesn't end until the school that I'm in in Raleigh doesn't mm -hmm. end until um, June. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going in December. Mm -hmm. You're just yeah. going to go to visit, right? Yes, I'm going to visit, but I may stay a little while. Yeah, I think you should. That's You kind of really learn a lot on your first visit. Like, for me, like, <laughs> Bamani would tell you, I was never, ever on the tour bus. Mm -hmm. I was only on the tour bus when they collected us from the airport. They took us mm -hmm. to East Ligon. We're at the Micklin for three nights. And then when we left uh, Accra and went to Cape Coast, I had to get on the tour bus. So I stayed at the Carrick Hotel in, in, um, in Cape Coast, and then we went to Kamasi. Mm -hmm. So within those times, I was hanging out with local people and learning the terrain and trying to learn as much about the culture. I was really trying to evaluate if I could live there. And yeah. that's what I really came yes. to the conclusion. I really couldn't have come to the conclusion if I was on the tour bus. Because and when see, you're on I've the been... tour bus, yeah, you're going you tourist tour. places. Mm -hmm. That is so true. See, I've been to Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been to, to um, Liberia. Wow. And because um, I love traveling, but I mm -hmm. don't get the opportunity to travel as much as I would like, but I'm trying to change that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm with you. Um, the first time I set foot on the continent, I decided that I'm going to move. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move there. And so now what I'm interested in getting dual citizenships. And you one of the places I'm going to do is Sierra Leone too. I'm going to get a dual citizenship there too. Yeah, they'll give it to you. Even if you ain't even from there, they, all they want is the money. <laughs> yes, and see, and I did the, um, the African ancestry. They'll give it to you. Let me tell you, it's all about money. It is, it's but it's, it's not it's fair because, you know, grab. that's where our roots are. We, we couldn't yeah. help that our ancestors were snatched from yeah. there. Yep, it's just a money grab, doctor, because this mm -hmm. guy called Dinas, the mayor, he's running yes. that time operation where he'll take you to uh, Sierra Leone. And it's actually Bamani who told him to get into doing tours. It was mm -hmm. Bamani who told him. started doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's how I found Bamani through Dynasty Mayor's YouTube channel mm -hmm. back in 2019. That's how I managed to meet Bamani through the, through the uh, Dynasty Mayor's channel. But it's just a money grab, really. Um, it is. It if is. you were a white man, they would say you're from here. You can get your citizen. <laughs> and I think that's a shame, but it's it's true. Yeah, it is true. It and is so true. I plan to go through Dynast to go yeah. to Sierra Leone because he yeah. will set up that paperwork and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will do. He'll do everything for you. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I I saw the video that Go Black to Africa did on Sierra Leone, and I'm saying to myself like. You know, not to put the country down or anything, but this is a gold, a country that produces some of the finest diamonds on the planet. So yes. Leon doesn't even have a road from the airport. They have to get on a it's ferry. Sad. It's, it's really bad. sad. It's sad. But it's that's where um that's where some of my DNA. Because yeah. according to that, you know, my people are, are Mindy and Tim Timney. Yeah. So both of the largest oh. groups. So I said, I'm going. Oh, I understand. You already did your ancestry already then? Yes, I got it on the 19th. And so. Oh, wow. So they'll give yeah. it to you in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. They'll give it to you in a heartbeat. Yes. But do you, do you think you want to live in Sierra Leone or you want to live in Ghana? Both. Uh, as a matter of oh, fact, okay. I want to live all over, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I That's got. That's used to be. We yes, because I have to go um, from one country to another. Right, right. And see, in some of the places, you know, uh, will not allow, like, for instance, I think it's Liberia, if I'm not mistaken. Is it Liberia? 
they don't believe in dual citizenships. They you don't? have to give up your citizenship. It's one of the places. Yeah. Because then how can you come back to America then if you give up your US citizenship you, when all your you, family are here? You won't be able to do it. So that's not and so Sierra Leone allows for multiple citizenships. So it is Ghana. Yeah. And so I plan to get it in Ghana too. But with Sierra Leone, I can get it quickly. Yeah. Yeah, of course, because you and have so the, just the, in case something happens here in the United States, which is going to happen. Oh, yeah. Which is happening now, at least I can leave. You Doctor, know, so. you know, I have a hunch that if we're not out of here by the end of the year, we, uh, we can't leave again. Yes, as a matter of fact, one of my nieces had a uh, vision and she was um, saying that she saw that one day it was going to open up and then um, they realized too many of us were leaving. Yeah. And so they shut it down. I so, believe... Yeah. This COVID-19 was just a test run. The real it thing that they're gonna leash on us, the real mm -hmm. thing that they're gonna leash on us is gonna be way more severe. It's coming. It's yeah, it's, it's all coming. here. And see, and if we don't make plans to leave here, because one of the yeah. things I want to do immediately is to build on that land. Yeah. Ghana. And so when I go in December, well, I'm thinking about going this summer to spend 30 days so that they can say that, you know, I spent 30 days. And then when I go back in December for the tour, mm. I can start, you know, I can start building as soon as I get the residence. The residence um, papers. Or the resident you know, card. Yeah, that, you know what? I tell you something about Ghana, right? If you're going to get the residency in Ghana, to be on mm -hmm. the safe side, doctor, mm -hmm. book your time for three months. Let me tell you why. They will tell you, even though Bamani is telling you you need 30 days, trust me, it's going to take longer than that because I've been through it already. Mm -hmm. I, okay. paid, I paid my money in January of 2021. Hey, bro right? brother, uh, brother uh, uh, Charles, the residency mm -hmm. that you were talking about is under what we set up the new stuff where the immigration officer works on that stuff and get it done. There's no lawyers, okay. nobody in between. Uh, all it is mm -hmm. is Brother Duncan meeting you at the airport and taking uh -huh. immigration, giving him the pa the passport and they give and doing the two passport photos and submitting the stuff. It's a it's a that's this is what we learned from uh, the people before us. So that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Charles Barrister is no longer doing this. I'm doing the immigration stuff as mm -hmm. far as residency but my my new mm -hmm. policy is smooth and easy and mm -hmm. it, awesome. yeah awesome. So, so he was telling me about you know what he's going to tell you is going to scare and terrify you because um my residency along with two other people ours are it's 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 like i'm not even going to complain but that's the same defense attorney that i need to fight this court case with me so we have to kind of deal with the situation because he's our best asset to, to you know when it comes to warfare right now and uh, we don't want to bother him with some residency that we can fix and figure out later on. Yeah, so um, Bamani, if I go in June, cause the last um, day of school at the school that I'm working for, and I want to quit every day by the way, cause I don't like being a slave. <laughs> yeah, I need, these are white students, but a, a very, um, these students have, you know, they have money. Well, anyway, if I go there, go to Ghana for about 30 days or 45 days, then that will suffice this summer, right? And then, because I'm going on the trip in December. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the thing I have to do with, with the residency, uh, even if you get there and you can't get the whole process done, you just, just getting in and getting it submitted is, you know, is another process to getting it completed. Uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, so, and we have some unique techniques, but I would recommend that everyone decide to stay in the country at least 30 days and to okay. get us to get everything processed and completed correctly and we can expedite it as quick as you know i would say about two to three weeks you know 14 to 21 days um well, yeah two to three weeks okay okay good good because i think because that's what i'm thinking about doing this summer spending at least 30 days there all right well excellent excellent all right, anybody else uh, share what you have to share? And um, the mic is yours. The mic is open.
All right, so family, it doesn't seem like anyone else have anything to say. So we may have to shut everything down. Uh, thank everybody for getting on the call and joining and uh, appreciate everybody uh, being clear on this wonderful vision that we have. And we're gonna make this thing our work. Um, it's, um, it's been a long road and I know some people um, uh, doubt us and some people feel a certain way because then you know, they're not the ones in charge or they're not the ones who make you know you know it's just a lot of this unnecessary crazy stuff but um i'm prepared well equipped you know like a lethal navy or a lethal naval air station like you know where was that you now so you, i'm talking about firepower mindset and um we're gonna make this thing happen and build what we need to build for our future and that's best I can tell everybody, and I don't know, and want everybody out there, since this is a private call, but I'm also publicly sharing it on YouTube. Uh, let everybody know this is my team of brothers and sisters. It's a lot more for us. We're working together. We'll build this investment, and we're doing well for ourselves. We have rules, regulations, and things like that. And we um, we have only you know we're only as strong as you know you know as our situation is the weak link. So. I just recommend that uh, we all just pull together, stay strong, look out for each other and make this work. Um, and just understand that it's, this is a part of the, the, the revolution and the movement, um, bad energy. So let's move forward, let's move strong, let's keep it real and let's keep building family. And we, I love the energy of what we have built. And um, you know, by the time I finish, working on what I'm working on, because my next time to go to Africa is Ghana in May. And for the people who think I'm going to be arrested, I look forward to it. I would even go down to the police station. So we're going to make this work, make it happen, um, and um, be there in Ghana, literally, our family, um, in four months. So within those four months, I'm going to get all of the videos that I have currently just uploaded all online, all of the details, the documentation, um, do a fresh public uh, conference call uh, to sell the land in phase two and sell also industrial development and all the things that we have on there. I just got to put some work into the draft of laying out the land. Uh, so the video is out there and the documentation is out there. So little by little, we're getting there, family. So the next most important thing is I'm going to get light to the community and also get the roads fixed into the community and work on a situation where we have signs and everything and kind of zone and plot it out. And this is gonna be a very important aspect of our operation because this becomes a new command for all of our business operations here at Bomani Technology. So family, um, the journey of a lifetime continues. Once again, family, this is Bomani Tayamba. And I'm gonna just get my um, brother, brother Zebo to just give us a feedback on all of what we just talked about. And uh, just give us his input and just give us a close out message before we close out. But Baba Zebo, Zebo, I hope your mic is unmuted soon. All right, so let me look down the line. All right, have <clears throat> a Zebo answer. I'm just going to close the call. I think that's it. All right, Azibo, hopefully you still got some bandwidth in you uh, to just give us a closeout based on all of the people that you have heard from. All right. So family, it's been a beautiful long night and we've been on this uh, call, I would say about four hours. So 
it's uh, time to wrap it up, close out, and the journey continues.